Today's episode of the Nate Land Podcast is brought to you by Delete Me, Viore, Rocket Money, and Better Help. Hello, folks, and hey, Bear. I'm Brian Bates. With with me always is Dusty Slay. All right, Aaron Weber, and uh, Nate was fired for making a joke about Aaron being fired for making a joke about Dusty being fired. Yeah, we've been really firing a lot of people. Me and Aaron had to come back because Nate had been fired. Yeah, yeah. I don't know if the four of us will ever do a podcast together again. I feel like I haven't seen Nate in months. I wish him well. Seeing Dusty in a while. Yeah. Yeah. I, like, this is like whose lines in anyway. Like it's just a rotating four. Yeah. yeah. I hope we could all be in the same room together again. But after what Nate said about <clears throat> your mom, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if we ever will. Yeah. That's true. I didn't. Yeah. I wasn't ready for that. Yeah. yeah that was shocking. That. that was a lot. I don't know if you watched last week's podcast. No, nah, I never watched. Yeah. But <laughs> I heard it was okay. Yeah. yeah. It was okay. That mom comment came out of nowhere, but. Uh, besides that, it was okay. It is tough to watch a podcast you're on. Mm-hmm. I I can watch my own stand up, but I cannot watch me on a podcast. I can't watch anything of me. I can't watch. I film my sets, and then that night I go back and like, Ugh. oh, it's tough to do I, it that I, night. I, I thought I did okay, <laughs> and then you watch it like, Ugh. I like to film my set and then watch it about six months later. Mm. I found an old video of me. I was I was uh, my old computer. I had this video file in a random folder called like omg.mp4 or whatever i was like what is this and i open up and it's an old video i took of myself when i was like 11 and i did it for comedic purposes but it's a video of me eating yogurt while just crying oh <laughs> there's an old website called crying while eating.com that i thought was hilarious <laughs> where it's just videos of people eating and crying and me being 11 or 12 years old, I was like, I want to get on this website. So I filmed a video of myself eating uh, like yo plate yogurt. Like real crying. tears? Well, no. I mean, I'm acting. Okay. You should do it again and go <laughs> still crying. You know, like show the 11 year old yeah. now and you're like still crying after all these years. But I, I'm going to do something with that video at some point. It's too funny to not just me and bowl cut eating yogurt. Maybe a video of like, it's you eating the yogurt and then cut to you now yelling at little you. <laughs> <laughs> I'll do something with that. That's amazing at 11. There are already websites. You you and I grew up in different worlds. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I grew up in this century. <laughs> yeah, when you were 11, you were seeing the train. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean? Just a train coming in? You were like, dang, yeah. where, where did they get the train from? <laughs> you had a sundial at your house. <laughs> So, I mean, closer than what you were doing. I mean, you had uh, Idiot Boy. Yeah. Oh, I wish I could find Idiot Boy. That was a great video. I don't know where it's at, but it was a great sketch that I did. Have you heard about Idiot Boy? No. Well, Idiot Boy was uh, a sketch I did about a guy that was getting picked on. I don't know that I could even describe the whole pod, uh, the whole thing because, mm-hmm. you know, it's got some stuff in there. But he goes to visit these guys to get some protection. And, and instead, instead, they sell him some other things. Okay. And he does those things and then he feels good. He's like, oh, I don't need protection because I feel good now. And then he leaves and gets picked on again. Uh, there's drugs. You said it now. Okay. <laughs> uh, well, Nate, I don't know where Nate is now, but he was in New York this weekend doing yeah. Radio City. It looked incredible. Yeah. He uh, did Jimmy Fallon um, Monday night. And uh, he's probably recording, probably doing Fallon right now as we speak. That's insane. All right. So, Back at it. Yeah. The strike's over. Well, the the you know actors can't still can't go on to promote movies or TV shows. Oh, really? That so was, I thought I thought it was all done. No, just the, the writers part. Just the writers part. So if oh, actor okay. goes on, they have to promote a book or something oh. not movie related. So I'm hoping this is my chance to to get on there. Yeah, Nate's inability to act finally working in his favor, <laughs> huh? That's right. <laughs> <laughs> um, See, you kidding. and I can't do that because you know we're actors on Sprung. That's and, right. We might actually be in SAG, aren't we? I'm in SAG. 
I don't. I'm surprised that. Uh, but I guess Nate's not promoting. Him. What are you and Zach for? Because I did the Netflix, the stand Oh, okay. I'm. I mean, I don't know if I'm still in or not. Like, I don't do anything with it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, Nate probably is in SAG, but he's not promoting the movie. He's right. just doing stand up. Yeah. So, anyway. Okay. Well, good for him. Yeah. Uh, where were you this weekend? I was in Syracuse. That sounded very insincere. It did sound insincere. I've had, look, I just haven't seen Nate in a while. Yeah. You know? Yeah. You've kind of grown to not like him, apparently. I've turned against him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That'll happen. If you don't see somebody for a while, <laughs> <laughs> you can, your heart, they say absence makes the yeah. heart grow fonder, but also you could start to hate a person. Mm-hmm. <laughs> also the exact opposite. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> All things are possible. Right. But I was in Syracuse, New York, and uh, I had a great time, but my prediction was true. <laughs> uh, not a lot of people came. The, um, I'll keep whittling it down. I, I like to tell the audience that, hey, each year I come here and the audience gets smaller every year. And I feel like we're really refining the audience, mm-hmm. we're really finding who the true fans are. And I said, you know, a lot of comics will tell the audience to, you know, tell a friend next time you come, tell a friend. I said, for you guys, I want you to not invite two people at your table <laughs> right now, <laughs> next year. And let's see how small we can get this. Yeah. But it was great. Uh, I had a lot of fun. The people that do come are into it. Yeah. And we have a great time. Yeah. And it was hot shows. Yeah. I'll go back next year. I hope no one comes. <laughs> <laughs> I love If the that's cl- what they're looking for, they could have booked me a long time <laughs> yeah. ago. I can do well, that anywhere in the country. Well, the club wants people to come. I can tell you that. Oh, okay. They do like me a lot, but uh, I bet they would like to you know, make a little money for themselves. But could I email them and say, look, I know I don't draw many people, but neither did Dusty. So why not just book me? Well, they would be like, he did pretty good. Oh, they would. I think. Okay. I don't know. I mean, give it a try. Yeah. <laughs> Just reach out to them and go, listen, <laughs> I'm, you know, I don't have a, I don't sell a lot of tickets and I'm looking to find a place that people are not used to selling a lot of tickets. <laughs> yeah. 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 I hear you're the place. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't know how other people do, but, uh, I go there every year and there are people that come back to see me every time I'm there. Mm-hmm. But That's for awesome. some reason, I'm not reaching the greater Syracuse area. Last year I went, Syracuse football team was undefeated and they had a home game and it was homecoming. And the manager was like, he was like, ah, it's just a tough weekend, you know. Mm-hmm. This year, not undefeated and it's a way <laughs> game. And and uh, ah, it's a tough year. Yeah, but, yeah it's like know. there are people are bummed. The right. team lost and they don't even want to leave the place. Global warming. They start <laughs> yeah. blaming stuff. Yeah. It's just like, okay. But at least you've graduated to college football. <laughs> it's always like ah, high school football. Oh yeah, big in this town. I've had a club go. You know, the economy's just not. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like, yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah, and I, you know, but Nate was in Rochester on Friday, and Rochester is pretty close to Syracuse. Okay, well, a lot of people on Saturday came to my show said they saw Nate on Friday. I think he he sucked up a lot of my fans there. Mm-hmm. That's what I think. Mm-hmm. Okay, yeah, I think they were like, well, we could go see Nate. Or we could go see Dusty. And I think, you know, ultimately they made the wrong choice. But uh, <laughs> but what do you do? What are you going to do? I was um, in Tulsa, Oklahoma on Friday with Angela Johnson <clears throat> at the Hard Rock Casino. Nice. All right. How was that? It was great. Was it was it a Hard Rock Casino? Is that what they called it? <laughs> if they did, I missed that. Oh, okay. That's what they used to call it in Cleveland. Really? Hard Rock Casino. Why why would they call it that? It's called the Hard Rock Casino, right? I know, but I think that, you know, it's they trendy can, to mash the words. <laughs> Consolidate the words? Yeah. If they did, I called it wrong okay. because I just called it the Hard Rock Casino. But she sold it out and and it was a great show. And then Saturday I was in Knoxville, Tennessee with at the Bijou Theater where you recorded your special. Yes. With Henry Cho. And that was a great show as well. It was a really hot crowd and had a good time. Had something on my flight. Never happened before. Okay. Bijou's great. Bijou is great. We were landing in, uh, I can't remember if this is my connecting flight. I think this was the to Tulsa. We were landing in Tulsa. Yeah. I have a window seat looking out the window. We're almost touching down. Yeah. And then the plane takes back off. Oh, boy. And I'm like, what's going on? I'm like, are we about to have a midair collision or avoiding something? Did we land in the wrong city? What's going on? And it starts circling around the city. People are 
kind of around me are kind of like freaking out a little bit. Like, yeah, what sure. is happening here? And we circle around the city about 10 minutes, and then we finally start coming in. And then the flight attendant said, probably noticed what happened, blah, blah, blah. We were coming in too heavy, so we had to circle around the city to burn off some fuel before we could land. Now, in my mind, we avoided near death. Yeah. I get off the plane. Angela's sitting in a seat a little bit better than mine up front, <laughs> if you know what <laughs> I mean. Different part of the plane. Different part of the plane. I get off. I'm like, man, that was crazy, right? She had no idea anything had ever happened. Wow. She said she was watching a movie. She had her headphones. I had to tell her that that even happened. So wow. we had different experiences on this flight. Well, that's what a movie does on a plane. <laughs> you know what? I mean, you can be like, I'm not ready for the plane to land yet because I want to finish this yeah, movie. Yeah. Oh, man. I don't know if I've seen a movie that good. <laughs> you feel a touchdown and you're like, ah. Yeah, exactly. I've never seen a movie that good or been in a seat that big on a plane <laughs> where I thought, I'd like to finish this film real yeah. quick. Yeah. But have you ever had anything like that where the plane has to take back off? I had one and I had the, the flight attendant got the biggest laugh I've ever heard a flight attendant get. We were landing somewhere and then we did a diverted landing like that. Yeah. We landed in Louisville or something. Then we had to wait and then we took off, landed back in Nashville. And finally, after all that, we landed in Nashville and the flight attendant goes, welcome to Hawaii. <laughs> and it got. Got borderline applause break. These from, Southwest uh, people, man, they cannot stop. But that's that. not bad. That's, that's not, pretty that's good. That's not bad in that moment to make that joke. It's in the moment. But they do get a little carried it away. It bothers me as a professional comedian to see uh, a flight attendant doing jokes and getting a lot of laughs. Mm -hmm. I'm like, come on, guys. This is not that funny. You know what I mean? Yeah. It bothers me some, too. Dusty's like, do you even know who's on this flight? Right <laughs> yeah. Now? I'm like, take it easy, guys. Have yeah. you not heard jokes in a while? Yeah. You guys ever watch a little thing called Netflix? <laughs> yeah. I mean, get with it, guys. Hmm. They do this thing now whenever they want to start the announcements. They go, did anybody drop this? And everybody looks up and they go, now that I've got your attention... And I fall for it every time. Oh, yeah. I've fallen for it maybe 12 times on a flight. It makes me mad every single time they do it. I had a Southwest flight last week where um, they asked me, the flight attendant asked me to sit in the middle seat. <laughs> and I did it. <laughs> Why? Because, so I was B-58, which you get B-58, you're going to ride on the verge of being able to get a window seat you or might get an aisle seat or a window seat. Yeah, yeah but you're right on that verge and sure enough there i see a seat in the back and then i'm headed back there and then i hear the flight attendant behind me say hey hold those two seats for these kids coming on board like a family and she's like okay but i still see one aisle seat very back of the plane and i go back there and there's a couple there and i'm like is this seat taken she's like ask her I'm talking about the flight attendant and she said would you mind sitting in this middle seat right up in, in front so this this family these kids can all sit together oh brian and yeah I, you gotta stand up for yourself yeah you do because <laughs> it's a like, ridiculous request this idea that you all need to sit together it's like nothing's gonna happen <laughs> just wait till the plane lands and then we'll all get off i don't think it matters but how young are these kids um i mean they were pretty young not like i mean i don't know eight or ten or something like that Oh, yeah, that's dude. too old. And Throw it's them like, in the cargo bin. I mean, eight and ten years old. Yeah. And I it's, thought you were making them like a baby. No, These no, parents no, no. are just letting them fly on their own. So it's like. No, not, no, no. The family, the parents were there, too. Oh, then they needed to be like the parents. Oh, dude. Nah, I don't. I'm not eight and it. ten years. Well, old. Well, then the dad got gets on a little bit behind and he gets somehow gets a window seat. And then the woman, the flight attendant who asked me sit in the middle between a rather large guy and a woman with a dog. <laughs> <laughs> um, she's like, would you rather sit in this window seat? And I'm like, yeah. And she's like, sir, would you want to move back here close to your family? He goes, nah, I'm good. <laughs> He's asleep yeah, before yeah, the flight yeah. even takes off. That's what I I'm don't sitting like, here like about this. Southwest with no assigned seats. They just think they can do whatever. They're like, Hey, these people miss their flight. They get to board first now. And then here's a bunch of people in wheelchairs that I'm not convinced all the people need the wheelchairs. If you need a wheelchair, fine. But these people, they're in a wheelchair and then they get down to the plane and they get up and walk. Did a miracle just happen down here? Or were you capable of this the whole time? Like the guy who left his cane at, yeah. at the Yeah, thing. here over the overhead. Uh, come back to security if you forgot your cane. You know, And I'm like, well, why don't you go ahead and explain to him why you don't need that cane? Why are you walking around with this cane out here? Everybody's like, I see everybody in wheelchairs, and then they get to where they're going, and they get up and walk around. I sit in the handicap seats all the time because they're <laughs> wide open, and I'm like, hey, 
If I see oh, a handicap, at the gate, yeah. Oh, I see sure. a handicapped yeah. person and they need it. I'll get up. I think yeah. man, the handicapped seat on the <laughs> plane, which oh, I've yeah. never seen. I was about to say, yeah, where's that? Yeah, I'd like to get in on that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I might start bringing a cane to the airport. <laughs> but then it's also like when people are in wheelchairs, they get a family member on with them at the same time. It mm -hmm. seems like a scheme. Like if if you're like a an able bodied person, but you want on the plane first, bring your grandma. <laughs> You know what I mean? Because she'll get to board and you get to come along. <laughs> or bring someone's it, grandma. Yeah, yeah. I'm, a, I'm A1. I paid money for A1 and I'm boarding 20 people behind. I'm like, how is this? Now, I will first? say there is some justice because if you pre-board on Southwest, they do not allow you to take exit row seats. Okay. They but, do have that built in. Mm -hmm. So if you do board early, if you they're not taking the best seats on the plane. A1's getting the best seat. See, I want the first, I want second seat because I want to be able to put my bag under the seat. So I don't want the first one. Mm -hmm. I want second seat aisle. That's what I want. Oh. I want to get off that plane. Second row? Right away. Yeah. You don't need the leg room, huh? No, no. Okay. I'm fine. All right. I want to get off that plane. When we <laughs> land, I want to be out of there. I can't, I can't handle watching grown men struggle to get their bag oh, out yeah. of the out of tough. the overhead. It's They're like, oh, oh, and I'm like, get it. <laughs> get it. <laughs> if you can't handle it, check it. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> get it. <laughs> you know what I mean? I mean uh, I see them there looking around like they want help. I'm yeah, like, yeah, I'm no one's gonna you. help you. Yeah. All right, let me ask you this. You've listed your, if you ran an airport, list of things you would do. Right. I think I agree with all of them. Okay. A um, couple of, well, one's just a personal thing. Most of us, including myself, when you get on a flight, you put your bag in the overhead above your seat. Mm -hmm. But it really makes more sense, I think, put it in the overhead across from you for where you're sitting. Because when you get up, it's right there, grab it and go. Instead of doing the twist, the turn. Well, the problem is, Brian, there's another side of the aisle and they're going to have to reach across and you get, to get their stuff. Yeah, right? you get cross trying to yeah. get your stuff. I like what you're saying now, but. Oh, yeah. All right. That's a fair point. <laughs> yeah. And what about this for non Southwest? Yeah. Um, instead of doing. How about everyone who who bought a window seat boards first, middle seat second, aisle seat third. That way. You're not climbing over people. Oh, I'm down with that. that. Yeah. And board the back of the plane and work your way up to the front. That'd I think be great that's too. The best strategy. Yeah. I don't know why they don't do that. Yeah. Yeah. I'm down with that because, you know, I, I like to believe when I have an assigned seat that I'm going to be, because I'm in, you know, I'm in group one, right? So I board basically first. Mm -hmm. You know, you know, I've been flying the same area. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, but you're uh, doing well. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> You're doing well for yourself. But I, I like to believe, I go, all right, I know I got my seat, so there's no need to rush onto the plane. I can just chill and let other people board. But the moment they say group one, I'm like right up in there. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. then once I'm there, I'm like trying to edge my way in <laughs> because I don't like getting stuck behind people. Yeah. A lady jumped in front of me the other day and then she didn't have her ticket ready. I'm like, what are you doing? <laughs> Hang back. Get, get it. Get your ticket ready. Get don't it. be up here fumbling around. Oh, how do I do it? <laughs> if you're not ready, don't don't get in here. <laughs> I don't know what people are doing at the airport. But in all I, honesty, all right, go ahead. No, 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 go ahead. The thing I did where the flight attendant asked me to sit somewhere else because the kid, would you not have done it? I would have, no. I don't think I would. It depends on the mood I was in, where I was going. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No, but I I haven't sat in the middle seat in a long time, and I don't I don't plan on doing that in a long time. For well, I didn't a long time. plan on it, but if when, when someone works there asks you to do it for the sake of children, I, I oh, mean, there's the some pressure there. Children. I I agree there is pressure. And there. granted, I didn't see I hadn't seen the kids yet because they're behind me. So I, I haven't boarded go, yet. I don't want to do it. Maybe you could ask one of these other people if they'd like to move for the kids. But I don't <laughs> want to. I'd like well, an, I, I like to pee a lot on the plane. I don't want to add. Oh, there you go. You know, spin it like that. Yeah. <laughs> I like to pee a lot on the plane. Well, yeah. I, I got one time uh, years ago now, I was on an aisle seat and this guy asked me what I swapped for the middle seat so he could sit next to his girlfriend. And I said, nah. <laughs> and then when the we're about to take off, the girl starts crying 
next to me because she's in the middle seat. She starts crying. Yeah. So I ended up switching with him because I felt bad for her. I regretted the decision. Yeah. I'll never Did she stop crying real quick? Probably. Yeah. I, I, mo- I was like, oh, gosh. So I yeah. moved. And then I sat in front of two big dudes. It was very uncomfortable. And I was like, there was no mm. reason for me to do it. Neither of y'all like sitting next to big dudes, huh? <laughs> that must be tough for y'all. Where were you uh, this weekend? I've been all, I haven't seen y'all in forever. I've been all over. I was in Salt Lake City this past weekend, which was a lot of fun. Wise Guys Comedy Club, two hot shows there mm-hmm. at Wise Guys. And then the week before that, I was in Seattle and I was in Alaska, Ketchikan, Alaska. Had a great time. Y'all should both go up there. I'd love to go to Alaska. I tried. You, yeah. You tried to go to Ketchikan? Yeah. You should go. Well, they said no. <laughs> They'll get you up there, man. I would move there. He said they didn't have in the budget. And then when I saw you were going, I got back to him. He's like, well, things change. <laughs> so you're like, well, how's the budget looking for me now? He's like, listen. <laughs> I'm joking. I got to see a lot of Alaska. Shout out to the Ketchikan Adventure View. They took me and Jay Flake, who came with me. We got on a boat. Within an hour of landing in Ketchikan, we were on the water. Riding around, we got on some ATVs, riding riding wow. through the Alaskan wilderness, dude. Wow. Beautiful up there. I want to tell you something I saw at the bar there in Alaska. We were hanging out after the show at the, I don't remember the name of the bar. It's not important. We were just hanging out there and all of a sudden a bell rings and everybody cheered at the bar. And I said, what just happened? And evidently this is Alaskan tradition that if somebody had a good day or if you're just in a good mood, you ring a bell and you buy a round for the entire bar. And everybody, have y'all heard of this before? No, I think I I'd keep it to myself. And, and I, I was the only one that didn't know what this was. And they go, well, somebody's just bought a round for everybody. And a, and a server walked around with poker chips that were like, you can redeem for one free drink. I wow. love that yeah. tradition. We should bring that everywhere. Yeah. You know, I like that. Just you had a good day, show up to the bar, ring the bell. Everybody cheers. Everybody's in a good mood. That's a really good day. Yeah. Then you yeah. come home, honey, how was your day? I made a lot of money, but then I bought everybody around at the bar, so we broke even. Well, there were maybe like 25 people at this bar. So it's still, you know, still a couple hundred dollars for yeah. that guy for sure. But yeah. it, it's not going to yeah. break the bank. That's great. I thought about doing it after him, <laughs> but I, I don't want to steal this guy's thunder. This yeah. guy kind of became the hero. Yeah. I don't want to walk over after him and ring, ring it twice you're like you know what two <laughs> rounds i got two bells here then you just leave <laughs> but i was at the next day we're taking the ferry to the airport and you have to walk up and pay three dollars or whatever to use the ferry and i'm like man they should put a bell here oh yeah i would buy everybody's ferry here let me ring the bell and everywhere i was going i was like i wish they just had a bell here i'd ring it i'd pay for everybody well, that's very nice of you. Yeah, that is very nice. And of I you. know that you would do a thing like that. You won't sit in the middle seat for kids, but you'll <laughs> buy everybody in Alaska a drink. Yeah, I mean, when I go out to eat with you, I like to look and see how much you tip so I can tip well <laughs> too and not be outdone by you. Yeah. But sometimes you've tipped so well that I'm like, ah, I'll just have to. I'll I tip to, stupid. Yeah. I'll just have to let you win because mm-hmm. I'm like, this service wasn't that good. <laughs> <laughs> you know, what I mean? like fifty percent. Like I'm a good tipper, but every time I tip, I look over at Aaron's thing, and he's like, he's really upped it, and I'm like, oh, dude. I'll really tip well at like a Waffle House, mm-hmm. like really well. Well, they know you there. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we get spit in them waffles yeah, next time. You're gonna be back in a few hours, so you got to be nice to them. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'll be back today. <laughs> Uh, Uh, Oh, I want to give a shout out to someone. I was in Tacoma, Washington at the Tacoma Comedy Club. I was never able to talk about it because I got sick. Uh, It was great. Uh, Very good club. People came out. It's awesome. But the um, Thursday night, I was up on stage and I was making fun of my clothes. I was making fun of what I was wearing. My pants were real baggy. You're wearing that? (laughs) No. (laughs) Close. My, sh- my pants are real baggy and my shirt was real tight. And I was saying that I looked like a triangle up there. Like <laughs> <laughs> and this lady, listener of the podcast named Christy uh, and her husband, Flip, were there. And they. Oh, what a great name. Yeah. yeah. Flip. Yeah. And they own uh, some, you know, clothing stores in the area called Purpose. Purpose for Men is the one store. And they were like, we love the podcast, Nate Land podcast. And they said, 
we want to give you some clothes. So I went <laughs> to their store and there's a this little purpose boutique. Yeah. Women's clothing. <laughs> well, they have purpose for men. Oh, okay. And, oh, okay. Uh, okay. So yeah. they took me there. They had all of these clothes hanging for me in the dressing room. Wow. I tried them on, had a nice little fashion show. The whole place was like cheering me on. I mean, it was really great. It felt beautiful. <laughs> yeah, it was amazing. And then she gave me clothes. Wow. Um, and it was great. There's a little video on the Instagram. You don't have to pull it up, but uh, I don't even know which one it would be on. She has several, but I just wanted to give them a shout out because they listen to the podcast and it's great. And they donate <clears throat> a percentage of their profits to fight uh, human trafficking. So, oh wow, so it's great. So I think that's where purpose comes from. They're selling some. Oh, there you are, right there. How about this? How about it? Let me. Un- All right, hey, we had a great day uh, out here in uh, Ruston Point, Point Ruston. We're so hooked up and we feel good. Hey, we're so comfortable. It's hot. It's hot. It's hot. Good job, Tina. Get those pants just so, right. Uh, look at that. <laughs> All right. Oh, that's fun, Dusty. I didn't get those clothes. That's boardwalk, up. Dusty, right there. A yeah. little cotton candy uh, pattern yeah. on the shirt. I got the shoes and I got the jeans, but not that shirt. If you're listening, you got to go check out this shirt. Yeah. Purpose Boutique. Yeah. That's very nice of them. I it need was to get up very to Spokane. Nice yes. Well, this is Tacoma. Oh, well, I need to get up to Tacoma. Yeah. You know, Tacoma, the where I was at, the club was great, but I was on one side. Oh, and was I, that Catherine Blanchford? Yeah, she was uh, headlining the other Tacoma oh, okay. Comedy Club. So she went uh, along with my feature, Georgia Comstock, and we all went and, uh, you know, had a little fashion show. Christy even gave them a couple outfits. Nice. Wow. Yeah. So very nice people. Thank you, Christy. Yeah. That's cool. Purpose. Very cool. You want to tell us about Delete Me? Uh, yeah. Didn't even try that time, huh? No. Uh, folks. We, folks. It's a tough word to say. I don't actually say that word that often. Folks. Is that the word you live that leave the L out of a lot? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's like wolf. Yeah. A wolf's the word. Wolf. That, wolf's yeah, the yeah, word yeah. I do that for. Hey, folks. <laughs> We're excited to tell you about our new sponsor. I actually am excited to talk about this. Delete Me. I was very excited when Delete Me came on board. The internet is the wild west and your data is probably available to everyone who's ready to pay for it. It's a real problem out here. Mm-hmm. There are companies called data brokers that collect huge amounts of your personally identifiable information like your name, address, phone number, social security number. This sensitive personal information is then sold online for anybody to get. That is where Delete Me can help you. They protect your data from data brokers, reducing the risk of identity theft, scams, and annoying spam calls. I mean, how many of those do you get every day? It's incredible. And emails. Their software and team of experts will not just find and remove your personal information from hundreds of data broker websites, but they keep scanning for new data and get that removed as well. I signed up for this as soon as we started working with them. It's a very easy process. You put in your information and they crawl out there for you. They crawl through the internet and they find where all your information is. And then they let you know uh, what they've removed. They communicate with you about the process. It's, it's, I have, I know people that have used it, that their phone number got out there leaked Mm -hmm. on the internet and they had that pulled down. It's an awesome, awesome service. If you're into privacy on the internet, protecting your own data. They are offering a special discount for our listeners. The only way to get 20% off is to go to joindeleteme.com slash Nate and enter promo code Nate at checkout. That is (laughs) joindeleteme.com slash Nate promo code Nate. You really turn into a radio guy with the ads. Oh, thanks, man. I messed up there at the end, but um, But you know, sometimes they do too. I go on the radio <laughs> and uh, they'll be doing an ad and I'm like, they just jump right into it. Mm-hmm. They really get into it. They're professionals. Yeah. Like Aaron. Thanks, yeah. man. Yeah. We want to jump into some comments? Let's do yeah. it. Let's All catch right. up with the folks. Let's do it. These oh, comments. Folks, I'm sorry, folks. That's the word that the guy emailed and said, we shouldn't be u- saying the L. You should just say folks. That's what he said. Is that correct? I don't know. All right. Let's move on. I think I'd turn around. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> comments uh, am I supposed to say that comments come from Twitter Instagram yeah. YouTube Apple podcast reviews and Nateland at NateBargazzi.com 
This is from Sarah Cosbab. <laughs> That's fun. Yeah. yeah. Cosbab. My favorite member of the podcast keeps changing. Right now, it's Dusty. All right. Because of how often he nonchalantly mentions crazy car accidents he's been in. Well, mm-hmm. there's still more to come. <laughs> I laughed out loud when he said he drove a car into a lake in the same tone as someone discussing the weather. <laughs> Yeah, I mean it's wild. Yeah. I mean you when you have a lot of car accidents and you don't get hurt, it just it is nonchalant. It's a good You're time. Like, hey, had another wreck. <laughs> You're like the Dukes of Hazard. There was so many I always go back to my day, Aaron. Uh that was a, that show had a big impact on my the life. Dukes of Hazard. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. There was a, so many car accidents. Mean, Jessica Simpson. <laughs> right? <laughs> no. the Catherine bach oh wow <laughs> daisy duke do you have a poster her the original wall? maybe who were like your your the, like the women when you were a kid judy, rita, rita hayward i was gonna say judy garland, <laughs> yeah, judy garland. <laughs> was judy garland considered attractive i mean i know she was attractive but were people like judy garland's hot i don't know that's just the first thing you said rita hayward because shawshank yeah yeah uh farrah fawcett Fair Fawcett was a little bit even before my time, but I think her poster was the most Cindy Crawford famous poster. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I didn't have those. I know, know you didn't have posters, what posters did them, you have? I had sports oh, figures, okay. right? <laughs> I don't know if my parents were Billy Jean, <laughs> <laughs> Billy Jean King. Yeah, Billy Jean King. Was she a runner? Yeah, she was a tennis player. Oh yeah, the, oh, one yeah. of the best of all time. I remember that. Yeah. Um, no, I had like baseball players and stuff. Okay. Dale Murphy. Yeah. Guys like that. <laughs> I like Dale Murphy. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Not in the Hall of Fame. What a shame. That is a shame. Let's see what the next comment is. All right. Say, Mike doesn't. Terry. You know, Mike Terry, uh, <laughs> does the, um, Did I don't we think finish, this- I'm, I'm sorry. Did we finish that? What we were talking about? I don't even remember what we were talking about. Sarah Cosbab about me having a lot of car accidents and being nonchalant about it. Mm-hmm. Oh, we were talking about the Dukes of Hazard. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And, and, uh, oh, I did interrupt you pretty. Yeah. And this is and a very powerful point I'm about to make. Okay. About yeah, Dukes of Hazard. There was a lot of car wrecks. So, you know, you got kind of <laughs> used to it. All right. Go ahead. <laughs> oh, jeez. <laughs> That's tough. That's a tough one to come back yeah, to. Yeah, it is. It is. Because in the moment, it would have been like, oh, yeah. It reminds you of that because they're doing, having a lot of car wrecks. But, to have to come back. To I know. It. I honestly forgot what we were talking about. And then when it hit me, I was like, oh, this wasn't that good anyway. Yeah. But now I got to finish I it. sensed that. That's why I steered it the other way. <laughs> but you brought it back. Yeah, I did. Well, thank you, Sarah Cosbab. I appreciate that. All right. Mike Terry. You know, Mike Terry does a Sirius XM country music. Mm-hmm. He does the countdown. And then he also does uh, brings people out at the Opry sometimes, Mike Terry. I don't think this is the same one, but. That no, name, Mike I don't Terry. think it is either. Mike Basically. Terry's probably brought you guys out at the opera. No, I've never worked with Mike Terry. It's always uh, Bill Cody. Yep. And uh, Charlie. Bill and Charlie. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Bill Cody, Charlie. One time, uh, Kelly Sutton, I think. Yeah, oh, Kelly, Kelly Sutton's, Sutton's probably yeah, I don't before. know Mike Terry. Mike We've Terry's had Mike great. Terry before because, sorry, Dusty, I, you've made that comment before. Uh, have I? Yeah, I believe so. I don't remember that. <laughs> okay. Well, you got a good memory. I mean, I don't I thought this was a real revelation here for you guys. <laughs> Saw Aaron at Wise Guys, and of course he was fantastic. Wow. I sat next to a guy who said he didn't know who Aaron was, but was a huge Dusty Slay fan. Apparently, he isn't one of us. Hmm. I don't know what that means. Well, like a folk. He isn't an, he doesn't listen to the podcast. Oh, okay. Yeah. But I brought that guy to your show. Well, thanks, man. Yeah. <laughs> Well, that's great. Wise Guys was great. Thank Wise you to everybody. Wise Guys great. I, have a, I like that. I liked your hiking video. Oh, thanks, dude. Yeah. And Nate had just been in Salt Lake City mm-hmm. the weekend before, and a lot of people told me they came to both shows, which is very nice. Right. Nate sold a, little, a few more tickets than I did, but it's nice that people came to both. Yeah. Nate mm-hmm. sold 32,000 tickets. I, and... I sold about 300. <laughs> that's not <laughs> which bad. Which I was actually that's pumped not about. not bad. Yeah. yeah. Uh-huh. All right. Barrett Wilson. Thanks to Balanced Books Bates, I checked online and found that I had $45 of unclaimed property in Kentucky and $1,634 in unclaimed property here in Tennessee. Add this to the list of most useful life information that I have learned from this podcast. Keep up the great work. Brilliant Bates and crew. 
All right. Brilliant Bates. Yeah, I don't think it was really Brian Bates that did it, though. You brought it up. but No, it was somebody who emailed me. So That guy sent me some stuff, too, but it was both under $100, and I don't know how hard it is to track it down. So, so you're just... I let it be. <laughs> <laughs> let it slide. Yeah. Oh, well. Yeah. Yeah, I... um Some guy emailed me and looked my name up under unclaimed property in Tennessee, and I had $4,000 yeah. coming to me. Okay. I did see that somewhere. Was that a clip that was posted at some point? No. Okay. Maybe I just heard tell of it. Maybe. It was from last week's Mm -hmm. episode. Brock Sanderson. Does Dusty realize that the whole country of Columbia is named after Columbus as well as Washington, D.C., District of Columbia? That's debatable. (laughs) Um, You know, if you look at... Uh, the Columbia Pictures logo, when a movie comes on, it has this like Statue of Liberty looking lady. Mm-hmm. And a lot of people believe that Columbia was, you know, an ancient, you know, pagan goddess. Or maybe not even pagan, just an ancient goddess. Mm-hmm. And, you know, so it looks a lot like, you know, this this thing. So, you know, it looks a lot like the Statue of Liberty in Columbia. There's all some relation in there. And some people think that's where Columbia comes from. And hmm. as we discussed on before, they don't even know if Christopher Columbus was a real person. Oh, well, I mean, we didn't say that I last week. A lot on last I think we did episode. say that. That Christopher Columbus, we don't even know he's a real person? I thought that's He's what like we Shakespeare. About. A lot of people think Shakespeare wasn't a real guy. Yeah, I've heard that too. Mm-hmm. Maybe we didn't say it last week, and that's just something that I believe. Uh, <laughs> Maybe you're waiting. But it's like, yeah, yeah it's yeah. debatable about this, but uh-huh. I get it. I mean, okay. I hear you. I, I hear said it. that I don't think Christopher Columbus ever even knew he discovered a new world, you know, even okay. when he died. But I never said anything about him not being a real person. Okay. But you said Columbus, Ohio is all he got. In Columbus, Georgia. In Col- oh, yeah. Sorry. Columbus, Georgia. <laughs> Well, I mean, my point being, if he discovered America and then they named some cities after him and then a guy making the map gets the name of the country. Yeah. That seems a bit. Mm -hmm. But then this person's pointing out, well, he did get a country in South America, but you're saying that's debatable. Yeah. Okay. But most people I know are not going to agree with me and they're going to say I'm a lunatic. Yeah. uh, But look it up. All right. Look it up. The Columbia picture thing. That's a weird coincidence, though, huh? That it looks so much like the Statue of Liberty. Mm. All right, Dylan Blue, you glossed over Leif Erikson a crazy amount and just riffed on his name. He reached America 500 years before Columbus. That's insane. That's how good the Viking boats and sailors were. They did something 500 years in advance of the next successful attempt. That's roughly the same different distance between Columbus voyage and the 1990s. That's pretty crazy. That is pretty crazy, but maybe their ship got lost too. You know what I mean? Maybe. Yeah, I don't know if that was his motivation or he just ended up there, but they it's got there. It's very funny. Dylan Blue thought you guys were going to really dig into the history of all this. Must be his first time listening to the <laughs> yeah. podcast. Yeah, I was expecting to learn about <laughs> Leif Erickson a little bit. Well, a lot of people pointed out that's not even how you say his name. I think it's Leif. But I've never heard it pronounced Leif. I've only heard Leif. Yeah. You know? That's like people go into a Mexican restaurant and really knowing how to pronounce things. Oh, and yeah. it's like, just order the quesadilla. Let me get a like, margarita. Yeah, exactly. That's Italian. Like, but yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's only if it's written in italics, right? Yeah, 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 there you go. Yeah, yeah. Margarita. Uh. All right. Patrick- but there's a margarita pizza. That's Italian, right? Margarita pizza. Is yeah, the but- A on the end? Huh? It was margarita. <laughs> what? A, a, pizza, a margarita pizza. Oh, margarita okay. pizza okay. for sure is. But I, I just Italian, say right? margarita on both. I don't okay. try to get into, I try to say it the American way every time. That way we're not. You I know, bet you nail like, it. Like we're not getting into a whole thing here. I'm yeah, just doing yeah. my best to yeah, order yeah. the. There's a lot you can say about you, Dusty, but you, you never pretend to be somebody you're not. Yes. That's what I'm saying. Like yeah. the like a gyro, right? Everybody's like, it's a euro. And I'm like, I don't do silent Gs. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> I'm not gonna you, you don't trust them. Nah, there's a lot of there's a lot of <laughs> silent letters out there that I've accepted that I'm not doing. 
I'm not doing a silent G and I'm not putting an O in front of possum. Just on I never principle, will. Dude, I, I just never will, will not do a silent G <laughs> yeah, or I mean, an O possum. I'm not going to put an O in front of possum when I write it or I'm never going to do it. Mm-hmm. That doesn't make sense to me. <laughs> Good for you. Dude. Yeah. <laughs> you stand for something. Yeah. Well, uh, another name we had last week that so many people emailed us back about Cherith's cute story was one of the names we read. Oh, oh yeah. That's a fun name. Well, yeah. apparently it's one of the, it was, it's from Arrested Development, oh. uh, which I've seen and I love Arrested Development. I didn't catch on to that. Pick up on didn't it. pick up on it. And then the next comment was about David Cross, where we talked about Arrested Development. <laughs> so well, that set it, people off. Yeah. I mean, and Arrested Development was just brought up, but it's like, I didn't, I like that show, but I didn't get into it that hard. Like, it's like, I feel like it's good for like, I don't know, so many seasons. And then it's like, it just becomes the same thing over and over again. Yeah. You know what I mean? I didn't love the last couple of seasons, but the first three or however many they had, I thought were great. Yeah. I enjoyed it. Yeah. But I didn't get into it so much that I would pick up on the Cherith cute story. Yeah. Yeah. Well, obviously I didn't either. But don't, so don't get like mad at us. You know what I mean? Yeah. Next comment's from Jim Halpert. (laughs) 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 All right. Patrick McCormick. Actually, there is a Leaf Phoenix, the brother of River Phoenix, a.k.a. Joaquin Phoenix. His siblings were named River, Rain, Liberty, and Summer. For some reason, he was given Joaquin. So early in his child acting career, he started going by Leaf before changing it back to his birth name. How about that? You believe that, Dustin? (laughs) I mean, (laughs) uh, you know, good for him. I don't know why he would do that. It doesn't seem like rain, liberty, and summer were doing a lot. So we didn't know we didn't know about all that. You know, if rain, liberty, and summer were all famous actors like River, you would be like, oh, okay. Yeah. Why is he not uh, you know, some type of nature name? I don't even know if Leaf fits that pattern. River, rain, liberty. Well, liberty's kind of the odd one out there, right? Yeah. Summer. Summer, that's a season. Yeah. I mean, it could have been anything. Joaquin, Joaquin almost fixed in it as good as leaf does yeah anyway he's made a lot of bad decisions i think joaquin <laughs> hmm. you, you ever see the rap video that he was trying to make or he was doing a documentary yeah. where he was going to be a rapper oh you've never seen that documentary have you no the whole thing was a joke you would actually love it dude. oh would i yeah it was all designed it was all a farce oh, okay <laughs> yeah, yeah when on letterman is that character he was pretending to be a guy oh, okay. in public who, who was transitioning to become a rapper oh see i never got too into it and i just assumed he went insane because he didn't win an oscar for uh well that's what the documentary is about is the public thinking he's insane when in reality it's all just a, a joke <clears throat> oh, okay uh, it's great i'll check it out yeah you should i like him it's called <laughs> i'm still here that changed so quick <laughs> we've did a big 180 here <laughs> yeah. I, I feel like yeah, I do like him though. Gladiator, he's really good. Unbelievable in that. actor. Really good in Johnny Cash. Walk the line. Walk Signs. the line. Signs. Oh, I haven't seen that in a long time. Yeah. Joker. Oh, Joker. Yeah, that was great. The Joker. Yeah, that was really good. Good twist in there. I didn't see it coming. <laughs> yeah, we just <laughs> talked about that a couple episodes yeah, ago when Becky Young was Young on. Listed him as a yeah, genius. He, yeah. Well, he didn't write the movie though, right? No. No, but he, he's, he's a great actor. A good actor. I don't know if he's a genius. So, he's know. talking about Joker. Oh, oh okay. Big, yeah. Oh, yeah. Paul M. E. Mueller. I feel like we've had that name before. We have. Brian, you said Magellan almost made it back to Spain. He died in the Philippines. <laughs> it's barely over halfway back to Spain and a far cry from almost. Perhaps a globe would have been a helpful prop for this episode. Wow. wow. I like wow. the heat. I like the yeah, heat dude, he brought they're coming in. for you. Well, yeah. Dusty ain't going to have no globe on here. Uh, perhaps a globe would have been nice to have on set. <laughs> <laughs> coming with the attitude. You're, um, you're Paul right. Paul E. Mueller with the sass. I you're right, me. though. You bring a globe in here, I'll flatten it down. <laughs> It's going to be a pool table yeah. pretty soon. Maybe a map <coughs> would have been good for you to <laughs> <laughs> he, is, he is right, though. In my mind, um, so Magellan was the first one to sail around the right, way around, or right. his crew was. Yeah. He died in the Philippines. But in my mind, you make it all the way back to almost mainland China. I mean, Asia. Mm-hmm. You're almost made it. But that's yeah. a pretty long distance still to Spain, mm-hmm. uh, as he points out, almost halfway. So. When I was in Alaska, we were looking out at the water, 
and uh matt peoples this guy showing us around he goes he goes if you just head out that water next thing you know the next thing you know you're in japan <laughs> and jay flake was like japan is that close he just meant that's the next thing you'll yeah. run into yeah so we, we were thinking japan is this close to Alaska? <laughs> we looked it up it's like eight thousand miles yeah. away or something but it's a big yeah. ocean yeah it's a real big the biggest uh, that's what i heard yeah. i hear you can see russia from there not from where we were we we're the we're very not... bottom right part of alaska but yeah, yeah. there are parts where you well, can that see that wasn't you know that was a joke where they really made fun of sarah Palin. Mm-hmm. That. she mm-hmm. was like i can see russia out my back door mm-hmm. yeah and i think she was just making a joke but well no i mean i think there are parts it's very close right yeah they're the connected that's the bearing strait bearing strait at one yeah. point yeah I think the the reason people objected to it is because it was offered as foreign policy. <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's right. How are you going to deal with Russia? Well, I can see it from my house. That, you know, there was a theory that I read one time that Native American people were from China that walked over the Barren Strait years and years and years prior and settled down in America. Yeah, I've heard something like that. Yeah. I'm surprised you would even... Visit yeah, that's that kind thought. of the accepted thinking, and it has been for a long, long time. Is it? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, I mean, I next think- comment. <laughs> <laughs> well, I guess it just depends on whatever you're saying is, uh, you know, whatever time frame they would say. But I could just imagine that happening. Mm-hmm. I didn't know that was accepted. I think I read that in a Bob Dylan book one time. A mm-hmm. Bob Dylan book? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That makes sense. Yeah, I think they thought they were all closer together, the land masses, and mm-hmm. therefore. <clears throat> ancient man that's how they right. first got here but i just wonder does it even have to be ancient you know it could have been yeah. you know if, if, if a couple hundred years ago just well blowing in the wind if, if we didn't <laughs> discover it yeah. until 1492 and then left or whatever they want to call it yeah uh yeah. came over five years 500 years prior to that did he see people was he talking to people yeah. i don't know Jesus. but maybe it, it happened just a hundred years before Leif Erikson yeah. came over. Mm-hmm. Right. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Times are changing. You yeah, know yeah, what I mean? For sure. So, uh, <laughs> people love an ancient thing. I know. Like, Chase. Like a rolling stone. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Chase Schubert. My senior year in college, I wrote a paper on the map that first named America. Wait. I wrote a paper on the map that first named America as America. After America Vespucci, it is nicknamed America's birth certificate. And for 200 years, for hundreds of years. Okay. Yeah, I'm getting real twisted up here. There's a lot of quotes in twisted here. Too up. many Americas. <laughs> America as America, America Vespucci. Amer- you know, it's like it's too much. For hundreds of years, scholars knew it existed but could not find it. Then, around the turn of the 20th century, it was discovered accidentally in a castle's basement in southern Germany. But with World War I and World War II, it was forgotten about and left there until finally, in 2001, the United States Congress paid $10 million for it, making it the most expensive map ever purchased. How about that? Well, that is, look, Chase is probably smarter than me. That's a very nice, that is the most horribly written. Co- I was, I was going to trash Dusty for that. I mean, that's two sentences, that whole comment, basically. Just everything. Comma, comma. That's just... There's a lot going did on. Did you well, edit that just before I trashed Chase? Did you kind of change the way this was written? There actually wasn't a period between Germany and but. That that sentence kept going. Oh, my gosh. So I, I put a period between Germany and but just to give Dusty a break. I was so distracted. I barely know. I barely know what this comment said. Well, I but can't believe. I don't that believe was tough. This. That was tough. You don't believe what? I don't believe it. This, this, I don't, I mean, I believe that he researched it and he read this, but I don't believe <laughs> that they lost it. And then it was accidentally found in a castle basement and then lost again. And then the United Sp- States paid 10 million for it. But why, why wouldn't you believe that? Well, I just don't think things get lost like that. I mean, I can't find my car keys half the time. Yeah. I can see but, during a war, maybe something. But, but if you had America's key. birth certificate, right. you'd hold on to your it. Your car right? keys aren't America's Do you have birth your certificate? birth certificate? I don't know. Probably yeah. don't. Yeah. <laughs> they didn't make them back then. Chiseled into stone. Yeah. I mean, I don't, I don't. I like this, but I just don't trust anything now. Yeah. Well, it's obvious. 
Yeah. You know what I mean? I'm sorry I attacked your syntax so much, Chase. It was just, it was distracting. Yeah, Chase. I mean, you're not, you know, Paul Emmy Mueller here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. maybe, maybe a dictionary would have been nice for you to use <laughs> maybe someday you can be but well anyway i thought that was interesting yeah. um but you know all right elias c sam powell that's how i would do it <laughs> you really hit the pow that's everybody. how i would do it sam powell sam powell some some payo maybe payo i'd say some payo some okay. payo Elias C. Sempaio. That's probably right. In middle school, I asked my social studies teacher, how did people create the map layout and how do we know if it's the correct shape? I remember she couldn't answer me, so she gave me an attitude. Well, that happens all the time. This was the first time I felt stupid as a kid, only to realize later, later on, I should have been teaching the class. I get worse at reading the whole time, the longer this goes on. I don't know what's happening. Well, that was also, that one was tough too. <laughs> I got your back on these Thank last you. two comments. Thank you. Oh uh, boy. But I, I like this, but that, cause that's what happens when people, when you ask people a question and they can't answer it rather than going, you know what? I don't know. They give you some kind of weird attitude and you probably should have been teaching that class. That's an intuitive question. I'll take the teacher side. You want me to? Yeah. Yeah. How about this kid trying to destabilize the class <laughs> by trying to, I mean, to be anarchy if everybody thinks this teacher doesn't know anything, right? And this is a question that's not really important to what they're talking about. And you're just going to waste time explaining this. Yeah. Destabilizing the, the integrity of the class. I wonder if the teacher was like, do you want to know what the shape of the office is? Because that's where you're going if you keep this up. <laughs> That's been a pretty good answer. Yeah, why don't you yeah. go map out the, the principal's office yeah. over there? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, we'll have you draw the detention room, whatever you call it. But I just look back at a lot of times where I thought I was in the right with a teacher. And now as I'm older, I take the teacher's side a little bit more than I did. Mm -hmm. There's some stuff I still think I was right about, but if I were a teacher when I was in school, I would have hated that. I'd love it. Yeah. <laughs> God, I would have hated me. You would have hated you as a teacher? Yeah, you know, I was What always, subject are you teaching? Yeah, I, well, I was just, no, I mean, oh, oh, just, well, <laughs> I don't know what subject, I just would hate me as a student. Just, I was always trying to be funny. Uh, home ec. So, sometimes I was very funny. I would like to teach home ec. That would be great. Yeah. You know what they taught us? How to take biscuits, pre-made biscuits, and flatten them out and make little pizzas out of them. Oh, that's, that's useful. Have you done that since? No. <laughs> <laughs> I did do, you know what? I did do it at home a couple of times after that. Oh, there you go. As yeah. a kid. Yeah. yeah. That's great. Some practical stuff. Stephanie Benson. Aaron opened my eyes when he said Andy from Shawshank Redemption was a metaphor for Jesus. Wow. I have loved that movie forever, but never put that together. Thank you. It makes me love the movie and Nate Land even more. All right. How about I, it? I, I don't know if, I mean, look, I I don't think Stephen King is a Christian. I don't think he intended it to be that, but, and I haven't seen anybody else say that, but I think it, I think it fits. You know, I've heard that about the Green Mile. That, mm -hmm. that, that Also that, a Stephen King That book. the big guy. Um, John Coffey. John Coffey. Like the drink, only not spelled the same. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Is a representation of Jesus too. Uh, okay. Hmm. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so maybe I, Thank will, you, maybe I will also open Stephanie's eyes to something. Well. <laughs> <laughs> ben Rosser. I love how when Dusty was asked if he had a diaper genie, he instantly got uncomfortable and said no, despite not knowing what it was. You could sense his reaction to the word genie was similar to if you had forced him to listen to a Harry Potter audiobook. Uh, I think there's some truth to that. Yeah, probably so. I think it's a good uh, analysis, Ben. I s did we ever decide what the diaper genie was? Well, I think that's maybe just a brand, and it's almost like band aid. Maybe that's it's the thing you dispose your diapers. Oh, baby's diapers. Well, we do have one of those trash can. We do, <laughs> we do have one of those. It's like um, you open it up and you can put the diaper in there, and then when you close the lid, it kind of sucks it down. Yeah, and then there's a bacon soda like filter over the top to keep the smells from coming out by opening the lid on the top of the canister a soiled diaper may be inserted into the mouth of the contain do you need to use the word mouth there <laughs> people are disgusting i agree <laughs> i agree and this is wikipedia yeah they usually keep it pretty 
you know, level headed. Yeah. Mouth. You just say Gross. opening. You know what I mean? <laughs> yes. This is written by someone that doesn't have any kids. So that makes me think Diaper Genie is not the brand, but just that's what the thing's called. No, this is this is a specific brand. It's oh, a it brand is. of Playtex products. Oh, okay. Nineteen ninety nine. All right. Yeah, I mean, I'm not offended by Genie. I mean, I don't, you know, I You're don't not. I don't think genies are real, but if I found one. I would be tempted to make some wishes. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> do you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I hope so. It would be yeah. hard to not do it. Oh, sure. Yeah. What would you do? What would you wish for? Unlimited wishes. <laughs> well, if that wasn't an option, I would go for an extreme amount of money okay. right away. Because, you know, not that I'm trying to be greedy with money, but that would just... You would never have to do anything else. And then mm -hmm. you could give money away and help relatives out and ruin their lives probably. But, yeah. uh, hmm. you know. This surprises me. You've surprised me on and this. And really cause inflation and ruin the economy. Well, right? maybe the money, you know, maybe I would make a wish that the money would come from the government. <laughs> you know what I mean? So your, your one wish so far is to steal money from the government, right? Yeah. Yeah, okay. When you, you know, it'd be like a wish. Robin Hood type situation but but you're just stealing it for yourself but to give to other people to mm -hmm. give to other relatives. that's what they always to say maybe give it to them but to also but also yeah relax a little bit <laughs> you know what I mean? mm. i'm just saying it would be easy to be corrupted if you had a genie oh, i would sure, feel like you sure. would do the two wishes yeah and just hang on to that third one because you're like i never know when In case something comes yeah. yeah if a genie said <clears throat> you can live till 80 Okay. I guarantee you, you don't have to worry about getting hit by a car, blah, blah, blah. You can live till 80, but you're done. Would you take that offer? Uh, I'd have to consult with a doctor and see what my realistic life expectancy is. Well, I mean, the average life expectancy is, I think, like 78, something like that. I don't think I would do it. So what's what's the trade-off here? That Well, you're guaranteed oh. not to die early. Okay. Because but I could live longer than that's that. That's right. Or you could have some hor horrific accident that would have killed you, but because you've made this wish, you must continue living. <laughs> and no matter what kind of pain you're in, wow. you cannot die. Yeah, yeah. Well, maybe we, that's not part of it. I don't yeah. know. Yeah, man, you don't get the sweet release. Yeah. Yeah. You're, you're, you, a, you get hit by a car at 35 and you're mm -hmm. like, the rest, you know, the next what is it, 45 years, mm -hmm. you're, you're paralyzed. You're in extreme pain. Mm -hmm. But you get to board the flight first. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but where would you go? You know, like, looking for that genie. All right, last one. Jordan Pendley. Hey. Have any of you been a part of a show where the opener was better than the headliner? Aaron? Uh, <laughs> want to take this one? Back when I used to open for people. <laughs> Boom! Oh, oh, yeah. Yeah. oh, yeah. Is yeah. that true? Now, I have had, you know, I did a, I don't want to know if it was better, but I always talk about this. Uh, there's a comic in, named Jeff Bodart out of Indianapolis, and he headlines. And my very first headlining gig <clears throat> at Crackers in Indianapolis, the owner of the club booked him to feature for me. And I felt like he did better than me all weekend. Yeah. Um, now, prior to that, I had opened for Jeff. And I felt like I did better than Jeff yeah. opening for him. But him opening for me, I think yeah. he was doing better. Heavy is the head. That's yeah. the sweet the spot. Crown, yes. That feature spot's the sweet spot, though. Yeah. Uh, the answer is yes. That that happens all the time, mm. I think. Especially, like, bar shows <laughs> and, like, local shows like that. Oh, yeah. Whoever's closing out the show does not necessarily have the best set. Mm -hmm. And I've yeah. been that guy. I've closed out a show, and I thought other people have done better than me. But that well, happens, the show goes man. long. People are over it. The opener, the opener has a much easier. They're in a much better position. Mm -hmm. They have a shorter set. There's no expectation of them from the crowd, so they can just kind of do whatever. It's looser. They, it's it's a lot easier of a spot. That's actually why I like doing an hour on a 90 minute show as opposed to 45 minutes, which is all you really have to do. But I don't want the other comics to be out there for that long. I want to keep those sets short so that it, it, cause it's my show mm -hmm. and I want it to still be my show. I don't want to give them <clears throat> so much time 
that there's an opportunity for it to become their show. Oh, okay. You know what I mean? Yeah. Sounds and also, like- I want to do a lot of time. Yeah. I like to have the extra time to tell people about Viore. That's how much I love Viore, guys. Viore's great. I was oh. wearing Viore shorts earlier today. Well, I got out my... You cut your set short. The- <laughs> yeah, that's how much I love it. I got my Viore on today. It's yeah. falls here. Yeah. You can enjoy it. Viore has made me... I don't know if you guys know this or not, but I had always been considered a cool guy, but... I don't believe that. I'm a cool... I think you're cool, dude. Well, I appreciate that. I hang out with some of my cool friends. I had one of them recently ask, hey, is that Viore? And I'm like, yeah. I don't usually know about brands. I learned about Viore from this podcast... Wow. And now I'm a cool guy because I wear Look Viore. I Look think we that. all own Viore because of this podcast. I mean, I ordered my wife a bunch of shorts. She was working out today in mm-hmm. the Viore. Wow. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we love Viore. All items, items they have are great. They have the core shorts. You got the core shorts, I think. Two pair. Yeah. They're comfortably lined. Two pairs. What is, is it pairs? I think so. Is the and core pineapple- shorts with the lining in it? I think so. I don't have either. You have Because you'd have a single pair. Of shorts. Oh, so you have two, two different. You'd have two pairs. What do you think they call pants a pair like that? They don't call it a shirt. Because legs. So you got two two sleeves on a shirt. They don't call this a pair of shirts. <laughs> Dang. <laughs> you know what I mean? Dang, that's a good point. But yeah, that's a really good point. But what if do you you're think playing, Viore would say about that? <laughs> if you're playing poker, you have two pair. You don't have two pairs, right? Oh, but I think it is two pairs of pants. So. Yeah. Two well, pairs. anyway, Viore <laughs> is. I'm sure they love this ad. <laughs> It's a new outlook on performance apparel. Perfect if you're sick and tired of traditional old workout gear. That's what I used to have. You know, Viore can be worn. Can, activities like I'll say on that note, yeah. I have a bunch of gym shorts. And when I got the Viore, I never want to wear those other shorts. Oh, I'm yeah, not even yeah. making that up. I never want to wear those shorts. Really raise the bar. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's an investment on your happiness. I always say that, guys. <laughs> it's an investment on your happiness. And for our listeners, they're offering 20% off of your first purchase Get yourself some of the most comfortable and versatile, versatile, versatile clothing on the planet at viore.com slash Nate. That's V-U-O-R-I.com slash Nate. Not only will you receive 20% off your first purchase, but enjoy free shipping on any U.S. order over $75 and free returns. Mm. Go to viore.com slash Nate and discover the versatility of Viore clothing. I thought that was a good ad read. That well, was really you. good. All the way around. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We genuinely like the product. Yeah. So we got excited about it. it. I got a Viore catalog on my uh, coffee table right now that I'm going to order some more stuff from. I like it a lot. Yeah. You order out of a catalog? Well, they <laughs> sent me the catalog, so I'll look at it. Okay. You know. But you're ordering it online. Yeah, yeah. Okay, for sure. good. Yeah. But I, I love it, though. I'm like, it feels fancy. You know what I mean? To order out of a catalog? No, no. To have Viore. Oh, okay. Good. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I, yeah, my friends, you know, they think I'm cool now. You All don't right. believe me, Aaron? But All right. don't, does this shirt not look cool? It, it does, does look cool. It's not the shirt, but yeah, yeah, it makes it look nice. What yeah. do you call? What would you call it? I call that a, a pullover. Oh yeah, a little quarter zip. A little quarter zip. All right, whatever. All right. Uh, so this week, guys, it is this week, I believe, marks the 30 year anniversary of the re- release of the movie Rudy. Wow. So I thought it'd be a good How time to talk about it? sports movies. Yes. I love it. I love I love sports movies a lot. So I like that we're doing this. Boy, doing a little research, I forgot just how many sports movies there are. There mm-hmm. are a ton, including some that I'm like, I didn't even really think of that as a sports movie. Like Jerry Maguire. Oh, well, yeah. That's a sports movie. I, I, think, mean, I, I think that's a relationship movie with sports in the background. I kind of do, too. I mean, I guess I think of a sports movie as they're, they're Even playing. like Rudy is a story about a guy overcoming adversity and persevering. It's about the human spirit. It's but he not really, about football. But he really wants to play football. He really wants to. And in the end, he does get to. In the end, Jerry Maguire gets the girl or whatever. Right, but he's a sports agent in the movie. Yeah, but I, I don't think of it the same. Okay. I mean, I could see both sides, but I just that's not what I... And Karate Kid was another one, which, yeah, I guess it's a sports movie. I just think it was a coming of age. Gladiator. You think Gladiator as a no, sports movie? I don't. But I don't, that but was, I could see that. That though. was their sports. Yeah, that's true. It has all the makings of a sports movie. The under, uh, the you know, the the guy they all rally behind. And, yeah. Yeah. It's just, that was sports back then. It's not much different than football nowadays, if you want to be cynical about it. Yeah. They're just gladiators in a coliseum. That's true. So what's your favorite sports movie? 
Oh man, Moneyball, Moneyball or Rudy? Those mm-hmm. are probably the two my two favorites. Sandlot, they're all great. They I, all they all scratch a different itch. I think for sure it's Rocky. I think Rocky not only maybe the best, and I know you guys already talked about it without me, which I was very bummed about. I mean, Brian knows that I love Rocky. Yeah, I didn't um, know that. But um, uh, the um, I think Rocky may be the best movie. Well, you and Becky don't have a lot in common. Outside of sports movies. It's such a great movie. It is a great movie. Almost to the point where it's so good, I almost don't even think it is a sports movie. I know it is, but that movie almost transcends sports. I get that. Yeah, yeah. Because it is, as Mike pointed out, it's just it's a movie about the 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 will, the spirit of someone who was just down on their luck. But um, the Rocky series, and I know you already talked about it. I'm going to make this last comment. No, no, no. Go ahead. <laughs> but up until Rocky Four, it is like the best series. Rocky Five ruins the whole series because Rocky Five, he's lost everything. He's mm-hmm. got dang near brain damage, and and he's not, and he's losing his son uh, because he's focused on Tommy Gunn. He's losing everything mm-hmm. in Rocky Five, and it's like. If you just stop at Rocky Four, it's you know because Rocky Four he gets punched so much, but yeah. you think, wow, this guy's just tough. Mm-hmm. Rocky Five, you're like, oh, that that fight almost caused. You. He's like, my hands won't stop shaking, and I'm like, well, you just ruined four for us, uh-huh. you know, because mm-hmm. now this heroic thing he did is now you're witnessing a, a tragedy. Mm-hmm. And the Russian, he had to go back to Russia and be a loser and get exiled. <laughs> <laughs> Which like, we learned in Creed or Creed Two, maybe. Yeah, it's like nobody wins. Yeah, <sighs> I'm sorry about <laughs> like, that. Like, stop man. making it after four. Uh huh. Just let it go. Yeah, yeah. Sorry. Well, maybe stop making it after one. To be honest with you. No, no. Well, the movies it totally shit. R- Rocky One was just a. It was a different. It was totally different after Rocky One. But Rocky Three was also an incredible movie. Very underrated, but much more Hollywoodish. Much more, you know. Unbelievable. And he doesn't win in the first one. That's what it makes it more real. But he doesn't. He loses in the third one, too. Yeah. But then he comes back and wins, which is every sports movie. But he wins in the first one because he says, I just want to go. He never expected to win. Right. He's like, I just want to go the distance. He said, I don't want to look, you know, I don't want to look bad out there. I want to go the distance. And he does. Mm hmm. So, yeah. I mean, Rocky, Rocky's great. I love. I think for me, um, maybe Hoosiers. Okay. Hoosiers <laughs> is a good one. <laughs> Why is that funny, Aaron? I don't know. <laughs> Hoosiers is a good one. I just rewatched it. Okay. It's the same oh. guy that made Rudy. Okay. It is. Yeah. It, I didn't realize that. Uh-huh. Dr- same director, same writer, yeah. same everything. It's really great. It is. It's. I think Aaron thinks that was my time it does. that I grew up in. Now, that movie did come out. When I was in high school. Yeah, 1986 it came out. Yeah. Gene Hackman's incredible. He is incredible in it. And it's, I do love Rudy. And I've really lately, because I've seen Moneyball a bunch lately, I love Moneyball. The thing about, and I, I recently- never watched Moneyball. Well, I recently watched Rudy again and, and Moneyball. When I was in the 80s, some sports movies, the, the scenes of the actually playing sports was so bad oh, yeah. and so unbelievable. Yeah. But now these movies, um, I mean, Moneyball, it's incredible. Yeah. The way they kind of combine the actors with the actual footage, footage from the games it's based on. Yeah, they did a really good job of it. They look like they really know how to play sports. Mm-hmm. Rudy's the same way. Um, I was reading about where they, do you know how they shot that final scene? They shot the, the actual game footage during, it was at halftime of a football game. Yeah. During they were playing Boston College. That's right. Yeah. And they're in the movie, they're playing Georgia Tech, but it was filmed in the middle of a Boston College Notre Dame game. So you can actually see a lot of Boston College shirts and stuff in the crowd. You can. Yeah. 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 And they went out there at halftime. They gave uh, the director two games to choose from that one in the week after, which I forgot who they were playing. Uh, But it ended up being snow in that game. So this was the only shot they had. And the football players said, they're going in the tunnel and they see all these, like, what is this? Is this one of these peewee games at halftime? Yeah. <laughs> and it's these actors. And there's footage on YouTube of the Notre Dame-Boston College game. Like, somebody posted the whole game. And the, it was a blowout. Notre Dame blew out Boston College. Uh-huh. So they just start interviewing some of the actors from this upcoming movie, Rudy. Wow. 
and it's and it's just it's kind of interesting to see like NBC's footage of them out there yeah. shooting the scene, starring that kid from the Goonies. You yeah, know? yeah, Sean Astin. Was he Show- in the Goonies first? Sean, yeah, I think he was way younger than that. Okay, and then Lord of the Rings after, after Rudy, Fifty First Dates. He's great. He is great. Yeah, dude. He's a little much in Rudy, though. It's like, <laughs> like, like when you see him like going up to the guy that's running the ticket booth, the security guy, I'm going to play for Notre Dame. It's yeah. like, all right, kid. <laughs> okay. Well, that's, that's as you age, I, I do watch that movie differently. I do, too. Golly, dude. If I were on that team, I'd be like, shut up. I dude. know. This kid that's not good enough to be on the team, he's only on the team because the coach feels bad for him. So he's on, and you're just like, I got to listen to this guy yapping at me all practice. I'm a real athlete. Yeah. I'm getting, you know, I have a scholarship to be here. This kid stinks, and mm-hmm. I got to pretend that he's a real football player. I get that side of it, too. Mm-hmm. But you got to put all that aside watching the movie. Now, I like the movie, though. Yeah, you, you got to get it's, into it. His yeah. family doesn't believe in him, and it's nice Notre to Dame's see. Notre Dame's not for us. It, 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 it's it's nice. for rich kids. Yeah. Smart kids. I like that guy, though, his dad in the movie. Yeah, he's an awesome actor. Yeah, yeah. Ned Beatty. Yeah. Ned Beatty. He had a rough time in it, uh, Deliverance. But, yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, he did. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Rudy's dad will never go on a canoe trip. I'll tell you that. But you know what? There's a movie I like, and I bet you guys have not seen this, called Digstown. You ever seen that? No. Boxing movie. James Woods, Lou Gossett Jr., um, Heather Graham. Uh, it is so good. Mm-hmm. James Woods, like, is in jail and and learns about that. He's a big gambler, and he learns about this town. I. I just want to say, Dusty, I believe you that this is a good movie. This poster <laughs> looks like this is the worst movie ever made. It does. It's it's a guy and he's wearing a bathrobe and boxing gloves, and then James Woods is leaning yeah. on him. Yeah. Well, James Woods a hustler. The yeah. hustle, yeah. the muscle, the scam. Yeah. See, they go to this town. This town's a small town, but a real big boxing town. And one guy kind of owns the whole town because of a fight. Where he bet on one guy and Bruce everybody Dern. else bet on the other guy. Bruce Dern is the bad guy. And uh and so he makes a bet that Lou Gossett Jr., he has a boxer that can beat ten of Digstown best men in one day. Mm-hmm. So and it's That's fun. Yeah, it's great. I've never seen this message on a Wikipedia entry before. It said, this article's plot summary may be too long or excessively detailed. (laughs) Please help improve it by removing unnecessary details and making it more concise. Somebody dug in. I mean, Chase Schubert with the comment. Yeah. (laughs) It's great, though. It is uh, one of my favorites. Such a good movie. Never heard of it. Nobody ever talks about it. I've heard of it. I haven't seen it. That's so great. I have it on DVD if you guys want to come over. (laughs) (laughs) Sure, man. (laughs) You and Aaron both own a lot of DVDs. I love a DVD. It did lose $14 million, but. You know? Well, I, I for some reason, yeah, people a lot of people don't like it. Also, the kid, I just learned this on the way here. I was on IMDb in the car here. And uh the kid, <laughs> Bruce Dern's son in the movie, was also the oldest kid in Honey I Shrunk the Kids. How oh. about that? So, a little trivia for you. <laughs> <laughs> Not a sports movie, but yeah, one of my yeah, favorites. Yeah. So you had a joke about um Remember the Titans. Right. Did you always feel that way or from the time you saw the movie or did it come to you later? Have I explained my theory about that movie? Have we talked about it in detail on the podcast before? Well, just if not, tell, I think maybe briefly, but just tell people again about how the historical inaccuracy. Yeah. I just looked remember the Titans. You've seen the movie, right? Yeah. It's, it's maybe one of the most culturally important movies of my generation. It's very I feel good. like, it's, it's a good watched movie. a lot. It's referenced a lot. It's quoted all the time, mm-hmm. especially growing up playing football. There were lines in there that were strong side. I mean, we did all that stuff. Mm-hmm. I could live my whole life without hearing that river. Ain't no mountain high. Ain't no, I could never hear that again. <laughs> that river okay. song. <laughs> yeah, I could never hear that again. <laughs> Ain't no mountain high enough. I can't do it. And well, it, uh, the movie also, it made all these songs popular again all these the great soundtrack that's yeah. the one thing i'll say about the movie unbelievable soundtrack. the song is great spirit in the sky i mean yeah it's, it's great stuff in there but i at some some age i i googled the real story mm-hmm. and 
there are so many differences between the movie and the real story that it kind of ruined the movie for me. And I understand that when you're writing a film, you do have to move things around. You have to change stuff for it to work as a movie. But they made so many changes, chief of which being that every team the Titans played, 1971 or 1972, when the movie took place, every school had already been integrated. So every team they played. Desegregated, I guess. Or, or is integrated the right word? I yeah, think integrated. Racially integrated. Okay. They've been, yeah, desegregated. Yeah. There were black and white players on every team they played. Right. So the and whole they were, point so of your the joke, movie. Your joke line, though, my, is really. My joke is that isn't that <laughs> insane that Disney resegregated the Virginia public school system <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. for a film? Yeah. And the whole movie, they're like, wasn't this awful? It's like, yeah, y'all did all this. Yes. Uh, not to say there weren't awful things going on back then, but it's like you created all of this because that wasn't even a narrative about this team at the time because every team also had black and white players. They were all dealing with with race in the same way the Titans were. Now, they were a great team. Mm -hmm. That's Now, here's a detail that you should change if you're making a movie. In real life, the Titans just obliterated everybody. There was mm -hmm. not a close game the whole season. Mm -hmm. In the movie... The championship game comes down to the last play. It's a dramatic, you know, I understand. Yeah. That. But to fundamentally change the whole reason for the film, you're like, that feels a little, a little gross to me. Or just don't say it's based off a true story. You know, just make a movie. Yeah, you could. Yeah, you could do that. But it's like every it's the school. That's the actual school. T. C. Williams and mm -hmm. or say loosely based <laughs> yeah, off yeah, a true yeah, story. Yeah. Sometimes they do. Yeah, <laughs> based on true events. But wasn't there another thing where the kid Gary Bertier, who by the way was committed to Notre Dame, he was the number one linebacking recruit, linebacker recruit in the country at the time. He uh, after the season ended, he was paralyzed in a car accident. In the movie, he gets paralyzed right before the state championship game. Yeah. As if to say, now it matters. You know, mm -hmm. now it's important. We got to win apply. for him. Right. Before we were just winning for all the races. But and now we have to win for this guy, too. Well, it's just like you're changing these details in a way that just feels kind of deceptive and gross to me. Yeah. yeah. I yeah. agree. Well, you're. But you loved it when it first came out. Of course, I think it's a it's a especially I would for still, kids. I'm just saying, I would it's still a enjoy fine the movie. movie. You're wise beyond your years if you, as a kid, saw that. Like I don't. No, know. No, this was me. This. Maybe in college, I started. I looked this up. So this is way after the fact. There's some things that does like you said about Rudy. I love. I still love Rudy. I think mm -hmm. it's a great movie. But the the janitor, I forgot his name, but the the black man that plays mm -hmm. the janitor. There's Five been, foot nothing, hundred nothing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Since that movie, I don't know if that was the very first one, but there's been so many more since then where the wise old black man, and then there's spoof comedies where they even have the wise, you know, mm -hmm. guy that it almost seems like a, such a caricature now that at the time it didn't feel that way, but now it almost seems a little different. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, like Joe Dirt with uh, uh, Clem. Uh, was uh, Christopher I, Walken. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, I guess, but... Um, it's just like things become hacky that's at right. a certain point. There's, yeah. You know? Yeah, what was Those the golf... all tropes now. That what are... was the golf movie with Will Smith and Matt Damon? Legend of Bagger Vance. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And he's not even like a real person, doesn't he? Like... Right, he's like a ghost of, yeah. of an old golfer. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> just a old wise man. That movie stinks. Is it? I don't know. I never watched it. I don't it. know. I actually don't know. I'm sure it might be good. What about remembering... Is it Remember or Bobby Fisher? The chess Search, movie? Searching, for, mm -hmm. Bobby searching for Bobby Fisher. Searching for Bobby Fisher. I remember that to be really good. Yeah, chess yeah. is a sport. A good one. Nah, <laughs> it's a game. <laughs> yeah, I would say it's a game. I don't know the difference, but it seems like more of a game than a what sport. is the difference? Well, I think that there needs to be some kind of physical aspect. You need to be in shape in some way to be uh, a sport. Oh, you need to be in shape in some way. Bowling. I mean, bowling, you ever go bowling after not bowling for years? Your arm hurts after the bowl. <laughs> okay. You know what I mean? So you got to be. Okay. That's, get, that's some way. Yeah. You're in shape in some <laughs> way. Your arm is built up to be able to hold the ball, curve it. You're in shape in some way. Curling. Yeah. yeah I'm sure you got to learn to, you got to know how to skate. Darts. Curling. You have to know how to skate. Don't you have to skate across the ice to. 
No. Push the just out their own shoes. No. Are they on shoes? Well, you no. got to learn to stand up on ice. <laughs> yeah. Pool? Pool and darts, to me, is back to games. Okay. Okay. But the, there's physicality involved. Yeah, I've, you know? I've been sore for Hand playing pool. coordination, <laughs> technique. There is something, but I would say that's close. You say you've been sore from playing. <laughs> <laughs> playing a couple too many games, and I'm sore the next day. Uh, I've been hung over after playing pool for a while. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. Uh, I would say those are games. Okay. Well, you know what's not a game? Rocket money. That's true. You know what? Let me ask you this. <laughs> Let me there ask you this. What? what are you going to ask us? Yeah, please. Ask are me. subscriptions draining your wallet? No. <laughs> <laughs> but you know why? Because you use Rocket Money. There you go. There you go. <laughs> well, you know what? I was just thinking the other day about how many things I'm subscribed to. Oh, it is many. unbelievable. The average person has around 12 paid subscriptions, and they might not even remember subscribing to half of those. If you have no idea just how much you're spending each month, you need Rocket Money. I feel like with all the subscriptions now, we could be paying more than cutting the cord. Mm -hmm. And that is true. Yeah, you get rid of cable and you're like, I just saved 70 bucks. And then next thing you know, you got you know, 15 streaming networks. Mm -hmm. right, That's right. too much. Rocket Money is a personal finance app that finds and cancels your unwanted subscriptions, monitors your spending, and helps you lower your bills all in one place. Most people think they're spending $80 on their subscriptions. Usually, it's closer to $200. Oh. That is a lot of money. When you're signed up for so many things, like streaming services you used to uh, you use to watch one show or free trials, it's so easy to lose track of what you're paying for. With Rocket Money, you can easily cancel the ones you don't want with a press of a button. No long hold times or annoying emails with customer service. Rocket Money does it all for you. Does all that for you. I missed the that in there. Mm -hmm. Rocket Money can even negotiate to lower your bills for you by up to 20%. Just take a picture of your bill and Rocket Money takes care of it. Rocket Money also lets you monitor your expenses in one place, recommends custom budgets based on your past spending, and sends you notifications for your spending limits. With over 3 million users and counting, Rocket Money customers have saved an average of $720 a year. Stop wasting money on things you don't use. Mm -hmm. Cancel unwanted subscriptions and manage your expenses the easy way by going to rocketmoney.com slash Nate. That's rocketmoney.com slash Nate. Rocketmoney.com slash Nate. I wanted to re, uh, it says to manage your expenses the easy way. I got to the, the word expenses and I feel like I just kind of, that was a good ad read, though. I felt good about it. That was really it. well done. I felt good about it. So there's so many sports movies. Good thing uh, Chase Schubert wasn't right in the ad, huh? <laughs> yeah. yeah. I do feel bad about that. I'm sorry, Chase. <laughs> no, if you're we'll... still listening, I don't think you are. <laughs> but if you're, if you're still listening, I feel bad about it. We'll never... I think a lot of times Brian will edit these comments in a way that... Uh... <laughs> Makes it look worse? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I don't, I don't like Chase. No, so. but you'll tighten it up for Nate, right? A lot of times. Oh, I, yeah, I tighten it up a lot. Yeah. Do you change words a lot? I don't change words. I might. Yeah, I just tighten it up. Okay. And maybe occasionally, if it has the same meaning, mm -hmm. but but it makes it's clearer. I try to keep it um, six lines or under as far as the, the paper goes, right. because that usually fills the screen. Right. I don't know what how many of that line to be on screen, but okay. Sometimes they're just too long. So there's so many sports movies to talk about. Maybe we just take a sport and then name our okay. favorite movie from right. that sport. I like that. Yeah. We, yeah. Yeah. I love that. Uh, baseball. Baseball. I got to say major league. It's great. I mean, major league is a great, I mean, I'd love to say something more serious, like for the love of the game. Cause that's a great movie, but major league is, it's so fun. Major league is fun. Can a comedy be a truly great movie though? In the same way that a dramatic film can. Because when I think of the greatest movies of all time, I got to be honest with you, I don't think a single comedy is on that list. What? And I don't know why that is, but I think for some reason, when I see it, I don't take this as seriously as a movie. What's more dramatic than watching Charlie Sheen come <laughs> out and put on the glasses? Wild thing. Wild thing. 
Have you seen this movie? I have seen this movie. I but I I don't just don't think of it in the same vein as Field of Dreams right. or something like that. But what what do you think that is? Why can't I take a comedy as I'm a comedian? And for some reason, I don't respect comedies the same way that I do other. other I mean, movies. my favorite TV shows are not comedies. They're Me either. Breaking Bad or. Oh, uh, my favorite like are all comedies. Really? I, that's why I'm so sad about the way comedies have gone lately, because they're not good. Comedies used to be so great. I don't think there's any good movies, comedy. TV shows, TV yeah. shows, yeah. movies. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, obviously, Seinfeld and The Office, those are my favorite shows. But nobody nowadays talks about, hey, do you watch the last episode of some comedy yeah. well that's what i mean now present day comedies are not good but now they're all mixed together they're dramedies and i mean i think moneyball's got some very funny scenes in it but if i i bet if i look at the imdb's top 250 movies these are the greatest movies of all time how far along do we have to scroll down before a comedy shows up 10 uh, i bet it's a lot further than that okay we got 12 angry men schindler's list that's not a comedy right i mean pulp fiction's arguably a yeah, but nobody thinks of that as a comedy. I guess so. it's Forrest a Tarantino Gump. movie, so there's funny moments. Yeah, Forrest Gump is Forrest Gump a comedy? I think so. I mean, Forrest Gump is a it's a ro romantic movie. It's a war movie. It's like a it's an epic. What about when he says she tastes like cigarettes? <laughs> yeah, <that's, laughs> she tastes like cigarettes. <laughs> yeah, that's funny. <laughs> Sorry, Lieutenant Dan. She tastes like cigarettes. Goodfellas. I mean. You what understand I, what I'm saying. I do understand. These are all dramas. These are all action movies. Um, or look, Silence of the Lambs is like a thriller. Yeah. If you did, what is that list? That's IMDb? This is IMDb's top 250. These are uh, as rated by IMDb voters. Gotcha. Gotcha. Kind of the definitive list mm -hmm. as far as I'm concerned because Shawshank is number one. I'm sure there are other lists. that AFI is like the, the go-to list. Oh, really? Yeah. AFI top 100, but I'll, I agree with you that Shawshank. But I just, I don't understand. I don't even, I don't think it's right the way I think, but I just, I never think of comedies in that way. This has Citizen Kane as their number one movie, The Godfather number two. Mm -hmm. I don't see any comedies on here. Yeah. Well, that's just a myth. That's what our, our society has come to. They can't even enjoy a good laugh. They got to. They got to have their emotions manipulated to enjoy a movie. Well, you're this probably The listen. Graduate. Yeah. With uh, Dustin Hoffman. Dustin Hoffman's number 17. I doubt it. I mean, I know it's on there, but I doubt what, it. What are you saying about it? I mean, that's kind of a comedy. That's what I'm saying. That's that's the 17. That's just one. The rest of these are all. Anyway. Yeah. Sorry, I didn't mean to shoot down your major league. That's okay, but I do think it's my favorite baseball movie. Okay. I, I mean, I love For the Love of the Game. Uh, I think it's great, but. Major League came out my senior year in high school, so there was a lot of quoting of that movie mm -hmm. with all my friends. You know, I saw it so many times. Uh, I like like Field of Dreams. I didn't really get that movie when it came out. It's just it's too. I don't know if I completely get it now, but it's too mystical, so to speak. Then, yeah, it's supernatural. Yeah, and I didn't really. I mean, it's like baseball transcends things, but yeah, as a kid when it came out <laughs> you know like james earl jones's speech at, at the end there i didn't it's kind of nice but you didn't really i appreciate it now but right. as a young guy I like funny lines you know in major league where you know uh -huh. run like hit like maze run like haze or something <laughs> yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah 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 yeah, yeah. Right. stuff like that yeah um but yeah i mean major league i, I would say now it is moneyball um I think money is great. So good. And, um, but major leagues on up there for sure. What's your favorite R Rudy or oh, baseball. baseball? Oh, baseball. Rudy. You could argue Rudy's a baseball. <laughs> yeah, you could. Uh, the Sandlot was a big movie for me as a kid. The Sandlot. I'm talking about some of these movies. They're like, they're so impactful when they, they come at a certain time of your life. Right. Now I think the Sandlot came out in 90. It came out when I was very young. Mm -hmm. But growing up playing baseball, it was still quoted mm -hmm. all the time. You're killing me, Smalls. We joke, you killing me, Smalls. You play ball like a girl. Mm -hmm. All that stuff. I mean, my entire childhood, these lines were quoted. Mm -hmm. Now, I don't know how much this movie holds up. 
as an adult. Mm -hmm. I mean, The Sandlot is a kid's movie. Mm -hmm. And some would argue it's not even really a baseball movie. It's Mm -hmm. a movie about childhood. It's kind of a coming of age. The uh, the dog over the fence is a metaphor for Jesus. (laughs) (laughs) All your movies have metaphors. You don't think, do you know the plot of the Sandlot? They hit an autographed Babe Ruth ball over the fence. Yeah, There's some guy, giant... yeah, some lady wrote her name yeah, on it. Yeah. Yeah, baby, baby, baby Ruth. Ruthie. <laughs> yeah. Oh my God, that was the same guy? Yeah, that movie's great. Yeah. But you don't think there's a metaphor in there somewhere? These kids hit a ball over a fence and there's a dog that's over the fence and they're scared of it. Mm-hmm. And then ultimately the dog is not that scary and they learn to live with it. You don't think there's a metaphor in I'm there sure. somewhere? Do yeah. you have any theories on it? I to well, me, maybe it's like the next stage in life. They're old, about to age, get older. Totally. And it's going it's in. adulthood. It's the gravity of of real life, right? Yeah. These kids are growing up. Some of them are I think only one of them has hit puberty, it seems. Mm-hmm. So they're like they're right on the cusp of becoming adults. Yeah. And uh and you know, here's the scary thing over the fence, and it's not that scary. That's kind of nice. But I I would argue it is that scary. <laughs> <laughs> if Dusty had written the film, the dog would have eaten all the kids. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and they would have gone, let's not go near that fence anymore. Yeah. You were probably the perfect age when that movie came out. Yeah, I love that movie. It was really great. Yeah, like I was already too old for it. Nice James but Earl you... Jones speech at the end of that, too. <laughs> oh, yeah, it's great. Yeah, yeah James, Earl, James Earl Jones is kind of the common thread in all of this. Oh, he really did? Yeah, yeah he, was, he was the guy who owned the dog. He was yeah. the blind guy. Oh, I kind of remember that now. Now, there's some historical inaccuracies in that, too, because when the kids visit his house, he's like, yeah, I played with George Herman Ruth. And you're like, well, the color barrier wasn't broken. With oh, George. Yeah. yeah, you could not have been. Unfortunately, you yeah. could not have played with him. But That's true. Yeah. Huh. But still fun to put in the movie. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway. All right. Sorry to suck the joy out of that. But no. Well, you've been ruining a lot of sports movies for us. Yeah. He even pulled up to let me know, hey, you like comedies? Well, none of them are the best movies. <laughs> no, I'm not saying that's necessarily true. You like true. comedies. You I, don't even like I'm movies. I'm saying they're ne- – I mean, they literally have a separate category at uh, at these award shows. They're yeah. literally thought as something different than quote-unquote real That's films. how little comedians are respected. I agree with you. I'm just wondering why that is. You know? Mm-hmm. Anyway. Because we have to be valid. We, we're validated by real people on a daily basis. With the art world, they have to validate each other. <laughs> <laughs> we interact with real people. That's right. I think the Golden Globes has a new category now for stand-up comedy. Do they really? I think so. Wow. So, so you know, one of us could oh, be winning a Golden God. Globe. I mean, Nate's going to win one soon. Huh? <laughs> I take back what I said. EGOT. <laughs> yeah. uh, what sport you want to do next? Well, I have a question for you. What, right. what, what, what is a sports moment or team or something that you wish they would make a movie about? Mm, that's a good question. Because I was just very disappointed. I've always wanted a documentary about the, the Urban Myers era at University of Florida. That's when Tim Tebow was the quarterback, while Aaron Hernandez was on the team murdering people. Half the team's been arrested. It's a crazy story, a crazy part of college football history. They made a documentary. With Tim Tebow to say, being a metaphor Tim for Tebow Jesus. Being the, yeah, okay. <laughs> Look, guys, sorry, I'm reading between the lines on these films, dude. I'm sorry yeah. about that. But they made a documentary that, uh, in my opinion, was just a fluff piece. That's what I heard. For Florida. It made urban. It, it didn't talk about any of the things that are interesting. What everybody wanted to hear was, what was it like Tim Tebow being in the locker room with Aaron Hernandez mm-hmm. and what were the dynamics like amongst the team mm-hmm. and they didn't talk about any of that they just talked about like the games yeah it kind of it blew over a lot of yeah. crazy stuff I wouldn't mind a Jalen Hurts uh documentary oh, a bit yeah, uh yeah. losing his starting position at Alabama to Tua. Yeah. yeah and then uh, and then coming in in the SEC championship Mm-hmm. For Tua and then winning that game, yeah. and then not getting his position back, then going to Oklahoma and now being a huge success in the NFL. Well, now because of Thirty for Thirties, they they do so many sports documentaries, and that's not exactly what you're asking. Mm-hmm. But in that vein, a Thirty for Thirty or some type of documentary. Remember when Tennessee fired Butch Jones? Yes, 
And then they hired, I'm drawing a blank on Greg Schiano. Greg Schiano. And the social media backlash, right. they pulled, retracted it. They retracted Yeah, yeah. What, that's never happened before. Uh-huh. Do you remember and this? there were like borderline riots on the University of Tennessee's campus. Yeah, this was, that night. I don't know, five, what six that years ago. Do? A little longer than that. He was, uh, well, the claim was that he was involved with Joe Paterno's stuff, right? Yeah, he was on the staff at Joe yeah. Paterno and that, you know, there were some allegations that he knew you know enough that he should have spoke up and said something Mm -hmm. um but he was also not maybe as good of a coach as tennessee fans wanted to be their next coach well that was probably most of it right? yeah so they kind of used that and then there was just this kind of wave of people getting so upset and they Mm -hmm. just retracted i mean i support it the offer and (laughs) anybody on the joe paternal staff of that era is like questionable but I'm sure there's people in that staff who had no idea yeah. that it's anything was going still on. Still questionable, though. You know what I mean? I'm not saying they're guilty, but it's sketchy. <laughs> yeah, but you wouldn't want someone accusing you of something if you didn't do anything. No, that's true. But I'm just saying, if you're if you're on that squad, right. that's, it's sketchy. Yeah, I don't know what he... So would you watch this movie? I guess that's the question. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. I don't think so. Now, there has been a there's been a movie about the Joe Paterno stuff, right? It was mm-hmm. like an HBO movie with yeah, Al Pacino. Al Pacino. I Al watched Pacino it. plays Joe Paterno. Was it good? Yeah, it was interesting. It kind of portrayed him as just... he Was, was it a comedy? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it was very funny. <laughs> That'd be a bold move, make it a comedy about that, you know? Let's throw in some jokes. It kind of portrayed him as clueless to the gravity of it. Uh-huh. These allegations are starting to come out. Was, he, it was a sympathetic portrayal of... I mean, kind of sort. He's watching game film. Yeah. You know, when all this stuff's going on, it's like he doesn't get what is going on. Right. But still, come on. Yeah. That doesn't give you a free pass just because you're old. Mm -hmm. All that. What a. Uh, we're really getting sad now. It's all very yeah. sad. Sorry about that. I feel like, well, I feel this, like it's all my fault. Well, at least yeah, this, I was could, thinking that too. this could become one of the greatest podcasts because we've made it sad now. Yeah. Oh, yes. Yeah. <laughs> Less comedy. Less comedy, more drama. Mm-hmm. You're not You're not happy with what I said. No, no. I mean, you proved your point. So I'm not I'm not upset with you. I just right. don't like that that's a thing. Comedy's so, Aaron, right. you've had a lot of tragedy in life, right? Why don't you tell I us have. About- Let's talk. <laughs> Why don't you tell us about better help? <laughs> <laughs> if you've been listening to this podcast and it's a little too heavy, uh, we're sorry about that. What you should do is get with BetterHelp. This episode is sponsored by BetterHelp. Do you ever feel like your brain is getting in its own way? <laughs> yeah. Like you know what you should do, what's good for you, but you just can't do it. Uh, sometimes it just helps to to talk to somebody, to talk through these things. Therapy can help you figure out what's holding you back so you can work for yourself instead of against yourself. If you're thinking about starting therapy, it can probably feel intimidating or confusing or you don't know where to start. Give BetterHelp a try. They offer the world's largest network of licensed, accredited, and experienced therapists who can help you with a range of issues, including depression, anxiety, relationships, trauma, grief, and more. These are real licensed professionals. It's not It's not just like me. Mm-hmm. It's entirely online. You can text, chat, phone, video, convenient, flexible. You can fit it into any schedule. Just fill out a quick questionnaire to get matched with a licensed therapist. You can switch therapists at any time. If you don't like them, if you don't feel there's a, there's a, you know, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Connection. Any kind of like professional chemistry chemistry Mm -hmm. between the two of them. You can switch for no additional charge. Make your brain your friend with, I like that. With BetterHelp, visit BetterHelp.com slash Nate today to get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash Nate. All right, so what's your favorite uh, basketball movie? Hoosiers. Well, is it any movie that just has basketball in it? <laughs> sure. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, you say Coming a, to a America? long came Polly? Oh, oh, that's, that's just funny. backyard basketball. American History X. Well, well. <laughs> <laughs> <Shit is. laughs> boy, talk about two very different movies. Uh, 
two that, comedies this there. Movie, well, this is and this goes back to the question of like what what actually makes it a basketball what about movie? The one with Will Ferrell. You wouldn't, you wouldn't call American History X. <laughs> the Will Ferrell basketball movie I really like. Semi pro. I never saw it. I just watched it not long ago. The Flint Tropics. It's really good. Woody Harrelson. Yeah, yeah, yeah I'm into it. Okay, I didn't think it was that. Oh, good. White Man Can't Jump though. That's probably the best. You're talking basketball. about the remake they just made. <laughs> no, no, I am not. But Woody Harrelson yeah. reminded me of that. White Man Can't Jump. That's the best basketball uh-huh. movie. Wesley Snipes. Yeah, yeah that's a great yeah, movie. That's a fun one. That's the best. There was a Disney Channel original movie. I cannot remember the name of it, but it was about an all Jewish basketball team. <laughs> and I like that one a lot. What's it called? I gotta look that up. Disney Channel. I was waiting for the punchline. No, it's not a punchline. It's a real film. White men can't inspired. jump though, not up there for you. No. It's a little before my time. Okay. He likes the remake. <laughs> Who's in the remake? I think like Jack Harlow or something. Uh, Full court miracle. All right, I'll give that a look. There's also a called Double Teamed. Did you ever see that one? Do you yeah. ever watch any Disney Channel original movies? Oh, what about what about your uh, your uh, your dog movie? Airbud. <laughs> Air <Bud>, yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, Airbud, they they've made an Airbud iteration uh, for a- every sport now. There's a lot of bad basketball movies. Yeah, like what? Well, like Airbud. Or- oh, Airbud was it's a legitimately good kids film. All right, you're right. I'm going. Uh, white man can't jump semi pro. Yeah, okay. What's the one with little bow wow? Be like Mike. Yeah, yeah. Is that another, like another, Mike, I think it's called. And then there's Space Jam. S- Space Jam's awful, dude. I, you, you get, I loved it as a kid. You go back and watch it as an adult. It looks bad. It's like cartoon mixed with. It's just terrible. Yeah. Dude. I didn't see the remake with LeBron. I didn't. Even, I hear it's terrible. Yeah. Hey, I thought the first one everyone thought was great. You liked it. I, I don't even know if I've seen it, but I just thought that everyone thought that one was great. It is. Well, this is, look, I said that as if it was obvious. This is a controversial thing to say among people that like the movie. Yeah. I just, I think but it holds like, up horribly. It if, makes no sense. Bill Murray comes back at the end for some reason. If you were really? a kid, though, it's like, wow, Bugs Bunny and Michael Jordan. Yeah. yeah you're get, like, this yeah. is amazing. I get the commercial but, appeal. Of yeah. It. But not a good movie. Uh-huh. I haven't seen it in a long time, so I don't know. But. What about uh plus it's a comedy, so, so it could never be oh, good. So best oh you got a basketball? I'll throw a wrench Hoop Dreams. Hoop Dreams. Never seen it. No, I have no idea. It's a documentary about uh two young high school players, I think in Chicago, and just kind of all the stuff they're going through. And it it I mean it's been so long since I've seen it, but I remember at the time thinking, This is so good. All right, I'll check that out. Yeah, I'll check that out. Send too. me some of I've these. heard of it before. Um all right. What about um, boxing? Boxing. <laughs> well, boxing's got to be Rocky for me, but let's just take Rocky out of it to have some fun. Um, uh, Raging Bull. Have you guys seen that? I'm yeah. going Digstown, though. <laughs> okay. I mean, Did you see The Fighter? Oh, The Fighter. Mark Wahlberg. And Mark Wahlberg. Yeah, that's, that's great. really good. Yeah. Very, very good movie. It is a very good movie. Actually, Creed 3 <laughs> is really good, too. The most recent Creed. I thought we just took all the Rockies out. I know. But Creed th- that was okay. Creed three is was really good. Uh-huh. Creed one I didn't like really. Creed two I didn't really like. Creed three great movie. You didn't like it? Uh, I haven't seen three. I saw one and two. Three, I three is three. great. It's the best one of the series for sure. Do you think if you were cast in a boxing movie, you could get in the shape <laughs> that you need for it to be realistic? Nah, I'd quit the movie. Yeah, <laughs> there's not enough money. Like my whole life, I thought I'm gonna get in good physical. Look, and but, I look okay. But if you like, were cast in a movie, they go, we're going to hook you up with personal trainers. We'll pay you all this money. You just got to devote the next eight months of your life to getting in the best shape possible. You wouldn't do it. I don't think you're I, cast in Creed four, you know, and he fights you in the ring. You don't think you could do it? I but, got no interest in being a movie star. I couldn't do it. There's movies like there was yeah. one with uh, Sylvester Stallone and Robert De Niro where they both come out of retirement and maybe fight each other. Oh, it looks awful. That I terrible. hadn't seen it, but yeah. De Niro wasn't in good shape because he was supposed to be an old. Yeah. Stallone still. He's saying like, you would want to do that. Yeah, I, I could do that maybe. <laughs> in that movie, Stallone would crush him. It's it's like grudge match is what it's called. Yeah, that's what it's I don't called. think there's any time period where he wouldn't beat De Niro in a fight. Right? Yeah, yeah. For sure. Yeah, that's probably true. Um, Do we all cover? Well, we covered the boxing. big, the big three. Oh, Cinderella Man was another really good one. Yeah, Russell Crowe. Never saw it. It's a pretty good movie. It's it's a lot about the depression. Okay. So right up my alley. I like boxing movies. You know, you could argue that It Man Two 
is a boxing movie. Ip Man is martial arts. But in the in the second movie, he fights a, an American boxer who's like the champion boxer, and he's come to China and he's beating up all these martial arts guys. Mm -hmm. And so Ip Man faces him. Yeah, and it's cool. great. Yeah, Ip Man, very uh, nobody ever talks about it, but Ip Man one, two, three, all great martial arts movies. If you're into that, best fights. It's not quick cuts where mm -hmm. you can't really see what's going on. I mean, it's really great fights. It's one of the best. Okay. My favorite comedy is probably Million Dollar Baby. <laughs> <laughs> I hated that movie actually. <laughs> yeah, it really plays on your emotions, doesn't yeah. it? Yeah. Why'd you hate it? I just, I don't know. I just feel sorry for the girl the entire movie. Yeah. She buys her mom her house and her mom's like, why don't you just give me the money? I can't afford the taxes on this house. And I wanted to punch the mom. Right. And right. I was like, and then, you know, and then she ends up, you know, paralyzed. And it's like, ah, there's no joy in this movie. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a. Give it's us some joy somewhere. I agree. Some kind of redemption. Yeah. Something at the end. Yeah. Favorite golf movie? Oh, dude. Happy Gilmore. I'm I going think. Happy Gilmore yeah. myself. I'm trying to think of what else. Oh, oh Caddyshack, Caddyshack is. Oh yeah, there. Caddyshack. And I think Happy Gilmore is funnier than Caddyshack. Caddy, really? I don't know. Caddyshack is really great to me. I love Rodney Dangerfield. The comedy ages so horribly. It does. I don't know. Some of it is it's so corny and on the nose, and and obviously, Happy yeah. Gilmore is like age that, now yeah. that way too. But see, people love Bill Murray in Caddyshack. He that's almost one of my least favorite Bill Murray roles i like chevy chase and rodney dangerfield in that movie somebody uh my buddy zach towns in a comic here he said that the greatest litmus test for somebody's sense of humor is to ask him who the funniest person in that movie is oh, a lot okay. of people a lot of people do think bill murray's character is the funniest in that film that's i agree my, with you on that that's yeah, my least I, favorite i don't bill think murray he, i don't think he's funny at all in that movie. No, i don't either i'm least, not saying bill murray's not funny i'm saying i did not laugh at him in ted movie. knight maybe he's to me, yeah. the funniest one in the movie. He's it, very funny. It's well, Rodney Dangerfield for me. Yeah, Dangerfield. But Ted Knight's a very good, funny, yeah. straight man. I so what? Let's dance. Yeah. All that. Squares. I didn't remember Ted Knight's name, but he is very funny. I know who you're talking about. Uh, Tin Cup is another good golf oh, movie. Oh, that's Kevin Costner? Yeah. I don't know that I ever, I've watched that as an adult. I think it used to be on like HBO when I was a kid. Kevin Costner's done so many sports movies, especially baseball. Three baseball movies. There's... Field of Dreams. Uh huh. Uh, Bull Durham. For the Love of the Game. Bill Durham. Yeah. And then there's the one with Dennis Quaid. It's a true story. The Rookie. Oh, yeah. Oh, so four baseball movies. Well, no, no. I'm just saying, I don't know why I said it like that. Like that's oh. another one. But I just thought of it. Another baseball movie is a story about a guy oh. who makes it to the big leagues at like 35 years old or something. Yeah. Okay. Now, in the movie, it's a little more dramatic because Dennis Quaid is so much older than that mm. in the movie. Oh, yeah. In the movie, you're like, this is a pretty old dude. Dennis Quaid was born 35. He seemed yeah. old his whole time. Oh, yeah. He's mm -hmm. always been old. What about, there was a movie that I remember seeing as a kid, a baseball movie where the guy like hits the ball at the beginning and he knocks the cover off the ball. He hits a light. The natural. He, yeah. That was, a. is that Robert? Robert, Robert Redford. Redford. Yeah, that was yeah. a good one. Mm -hmm. All right. What do you got? What about bowling? <laughs> Kingpin. Kingpin, yeah. yeah. There's a Disney Channel original movie. Called the Alley Cat Strike. Okay. And it, it's a, they're competing for it's called the Mighty Apple. And at the very end, it, it, I mean, it's a great movie. And check that out. Oh, yeah. The Disney Channel original movies, they cover just about every sport. There's a boxcar racing one, there is a surfing one, snowboarding. They cover it all, man. You guys oh. missed out on that just, just based on when you were born. <laughs> oh, here's two I'm more. Sorry, I sure here's did. Here's two more categories that we didn't cover, though. One of them reminded me. We didn't say what our favorite football movie was, I don't think. Uh, you know, I think I know, Rudy. Mm -hmm. and, and, and but I think so. The Replacements is a really great. Keanu Reeves, Gene Hackman. Yeah, it's pretty good. It's a I comedy. I think that's though, a right? great one, yeah. Yeah. And it, Any Given Sunday, also very good. One of the greatest I mean, speeches in a movie, I think. Al Pacino speech in, oh, yeah. in any given Sunday. Yeah, I didn't love that movie for whatever reason. It's, uh, it's a bit dramatic. When I was stuck in the middle seat next to the fat guy on the flight, <laughs> he was watching <laughs> Friday Night Lights. Yeah. That it, movie was great. It really was. Now, I couldn't listen to it this time, but I'm looking at his, his iPad. There's some, talking about some great um, realistic football scenes in yeah, that movie. Yeah. I'm like, I think this is a real game. It does look that way. Yeah, it's yeah. amazing. Yeah, they're yeah, really that was getting a great hit. One. Everything's full speed. A lot of times, You'll watch a movie like that and everything, they're, they're kind of like going half speed. Right. You can tell this one, man, they're taking some real hits. 
What about racing movies? Well, you'll say Talladega Nights. I will say Talladega <laughs> Nights. But I'll tell you what. I just watched. I was trying to get my daughter into it. She didn't care for it. But the movie Cars, mm -hmm. I'd never watched that before. It's really good. With Larry the Cable Guy? Yeah. And I think I read that's the highest grossing sports movie ever. It's really good. If you count that as a sports movie. Wow. More, yeah. than, more than Rocky, huh? I mean, maybe adjusted for inflation, it'd be rocky, but. Mm -hmm. But also, um, what's the uh, Tom Cruise one? I can't think Days of Days of Thunder. Days of Thunder. Not really good. Uh, I think it's poorly written. I yeah. feel like they wrote that movie and then were kind of like writing on the fly. Yeah. But it's still good. I love Robert Duvall so much. That Me too. He's. Yeah. There's a Disney Channel original movie <laughs> called, <laughs> Come on, called Harris. Motocrossed about a, a girl who goes undercover as a boy to compete in, in BMX or, oh, okay. like, or like dirt bike motocross, essentially. Okay. That's a great one. Recommend you check it out. Oh, okay. Okay. There's also a drag racing one, too, about the girl from 7th Heaven. It's all good stuff, man. What about Kid soccer movies? Where are you at on that? Bend it like Beckham. What is it? Bend it like Beckham. Bend it like Beckham. Yeah. Is that a documentary though? No, it's a it's a movie about an Indian girl who wants to play soccer and her parents are, don't agree with it because that's not what she should be doing. She should be finding a husband. And um, what about Ladybugs? Yeah, I, I, I knew you had one in mind. You're like, <laughs> let me break up the category so yeah. I can mention the movie. Well, that's what it's all about. Rodney Dangerfield, it? right? Yeah, Rodney Dangerfield, I seen and that. then that guy who was also in a movie with Chuck Norris called Sidekicks. Uh, yeah, you've lost you ever seen Sidekicks? No. What's your favorite karate movie? <laughs> <laughs> There's down, a Disney Dusty. Channel original movie. <laughs> oh gosh, one of the Lawrence brothers. It is called Going to the Mat. It was about a blind wrestler. Oh yeah, yeah. And he he did okay. He had a cane. He walked to the. It was, he went to the mat. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> Ip Man is not karate. That would be Kung Fu, I think. Okay. But Karate Kid is really great. And Cobra Kai, especially You're a big fan of Cobra season Kai, one. I mean, I'll watch it. If they if they put out 100 seasons, mm -hmm. I'll watch it. Mm -hmm. But Cobra Kai season one, pretty incredible. Yeah. I've watched them all too. And I the last few seasons, I'm like, this isn't even really good. <laughs> no. I just watch it for nostalgia. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I want them to bring in Hillary Swank. Because, you know, she was the next karate kid, <laughs> yeah. still with Mr. Miyagi. So she's still in that world. She's the only one uh, left that they haven't brought she's in. She's not, you know, in the Jackie Chan, um, Jaden Smith. Jaden well, Smith she died, movie. right? The end of Million Dollar Baby. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she did. <laughs> so she's out, I guess. Did she die or was she paralyzed? She was. Uh, he pulled they, the plug, right? He pulled the plug. Oh, he yes. euthanized her. At the oh, because she didn't want to live like that. Yeah, she wanted to not be able to fight. Have you guys seen um, the Bill Burr? <laughs> joke about the first black swim team yes. and how it's such a yes. funny joke all time great yeah, yeah you know opinion. what i'm talking about no it's just about how there were so many movies about the first black this for and he's like i got to the point where i just didn't care like the first black swim team it's a very very funny joke it made me i was looking up lesser known sports movies mm -hmm. how the times have changed um <laughs> where did it, oh yeah this came out in 1981 back in my era mm -hmm. grambling's white tiger Oh, True geez. story of the first white quarterback of the Grambling football team. Oh, my gosh. It just makes me laugh that back then they were making movies starring Bruce Jenner. Wow. I've never heard of this movie. I hadn't either. But how funny is that? Eddie Robinson, LeVar Burton's in it. Mm-hmm. LeVar Burton plays Charles Tanks. Really the first uh, female quarterback of the Gramblings, if you think about it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> if they did a remake, yeah. I guess yeah. you're right. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's true. Come yeah, on, guys. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, they do yeah, a remake. Yeah. All right. Uh, but I just thought that was so funny. That's that they crazy. Would I've never heard Make of a movie this. like that. Another a TV movie. All right. Well, well, I'm just saying. I'm just reading through the Wikipedia. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, everything you thought of was Disney. the guy that directed Roots. Is there another bowling movie other than, um, aside from Disney movies, I feel I like mean, I'm forgetting. Uh, Bowling for oh, Columbine. Oh, oh, the Big Lebowski no, is a bowling say, movie. Yeah, I mean, there's some. Lebowski. And I, I don't know. I, I'm still going to say as a bowling movie, I'm going Kingpin. But sure. the Big Lebowski is, is great. Yeah. One of the best. I got one more lesser known. The okay. Fish That Saved Pittsburgh. <laughs> what is it? <laughs> it's, a, it's a cult classic, supposedly. Um, 
Okay, this came out in 1979. Yeah. I would watch that just based on that movie cover. That's a pretty good movie cover. Uh, uh, semi-professional basketball team, I think. Or struggling professional basketball that's, team. That's fun. Never heard of it. All right, so th- um, I think Cars is the highest grossing sports movie of all time. Mm-hmm. The highest grossing sports comedy of all time, The Water Boy. Oh, okay. oh gosh, Waterboy I great. forgot all about Water Boy. What a good football movie. I mean, I was just <laughs> thinking about it the other day. That halftime when they're in the he goes, how about when Bobby Boucher showed up at halftime and the <laughs> Mud Dogs won the whatever bowl? And it's like, oh man. But he comes out of the comes out of the tunnel. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Every season when Notre Dame inevitably loses, I go play the clip of Rob Schneider going, Oh no. <laughs> We suck again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's so funny, uh, dude. Yeah. Those yeah. movies, you would maybe think about, there's been numerous back in my day where it would be so cheesy. The public address announcer would also be the play-by-play announcer. Mm-hmm. So the people in the stands would be hearing, and he goes to the 10, the 5, right, touchdown. Right. I think there's some movie where Rob Schneider is that, maybe it's The Water Boy. Well, he's nah. the what? No, Rob Schneider's just a crazy local. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. He's fan. the you can do it. He's the that, you can yeah. do it. Yeah, yeah. There's some movie where Rob Schneider is the play-by-play announcer and the PA announcer, so everybody <laughs> in the stands is getting the play-by-play. Oh, you know, there's another baseball movie. Speaking of Bench Warmers, that was really good. People, a lot of people the didn't like that. Or the original, <laughs> <laughs> the one about Jesus, or <laughs> uh, you know, the Rob- bench is actually a metaphor for purgatory. <laughs> You know about the guys that did South Park? Oh, basketball? Oh, yeah. I'm getting that mixed up. Benchwarmers is Rob Schneider, uh, John Heater, and... uh, Oh, you were talking about the remake. Oh, was it? No, I'm thinking of Bad News Bears. Yeah. I think this... You want to wrap this up? <laughs> sure. I mean, <laughs> I I mean, Aaron's done. I'm out of it. Dude. Bad News I'm Bears, though. Bad that's Bears, one we actually we, we, we didn't even mention. But Bad News Bears, the original was great, and I think the remake was good, too. Oh, what about hockey movies? <laughs> Come on. Come on, Aaron. We'll just do it. Miracle. Yeah. Uh, Miracle. I liked, Miracle's I great. mean, Mighty Ducks was really good. There was also one about a Russian team. Um, can Mi- you? Miracle. Is that what it was? <laughs> well, well Miracle's about the USA America. versus Russia in, in the Olympics. Did a, a, Mir- a CCCP? Yeah. Was it? Yeah, yeah. That's I don't think Soviet it's the same Union. movie. It's the Soviet Union. Who, Kurt Russell? Who were they? Who were the good guys? I don't think movie? Kurt Russell was in it. Who were the good it, guys? I think the Russians were the good, oh. good guys. You're yeah, watching a, those kind of movies, huh? Yeah, yeah, it's a different movie. I I just saw it when I was a kid. I thought it was really good. Uh, uh, obviously, Mighty Ducks is great, yeah, yeah. but I feel like there's a one a good. What about movie? Goon? Goon was that? Goon is very underrated. Yeah, Goon the was guy great. From American Pie. Yeah. Don't you think a good sports movie has to have like a moment where you get chills, dude? Yeah. I don't. Yeah, yeah I do. Okay, good. Yeah, when, yeah. when Russia won, he, <laughs> he liked it. <laughs> yeah, you get chills from mighty from the Mighty Ducks? For sure. Oh, get out of town. I mean, dude. I've not watched it recently. But but you were a kid when it came out, right? Yeah. So it was probably. Okay. And Emilio Estevez, I'm a big fan. I mean, if it's not a Disney movie, you, you just dismiss it. I think Mighty Ducks is Disney. <laughs> yeah, but it's got to be on Disney Channel. Yeah. Can't be a mainstream hit. Yeah. Um, let's see. There, there's got to be another hockey movie though that I'm that I'm forgetting about. Well, uh, Slapshot Slap I haven't Slap. seen, but that's one that people often mention. Okay, I don't know that one. Paul Newman. Uh, I don't about pool movies. <laughs> Are we saying that sports? Well, you said no, but <laughs> okay. now you brought it up. The Hustler and The Color of Money. Yeah, The Hustler I've seen. Mm-hmm. Color of Money is Tom Cruise and Paul Newman. Um. <laughs> Aaron has checked out. I just, what are we doing? We're just, I, we're talk, I mean, I, I ping I, pong. That's what any, what's your favorite ping pong movie? Forrest Gump. Gump. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, go on. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, well, there's just so many. I, yeah. I don't know. I just want to, A League of Their Own is another good oh, baseball uh, movie. Whoa, what a great one. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. a really great baseball movie. I just watched it recently. It is. It's so good. It holds up. There's so many sports movies. There are. <laughs> I'm trying to go through the list here. Yeah. All right. Well, we did it. Uh, anything else, Dusty? Any more? I don't think so. Chariots of Fire? <laughs> Never Chariots of Fire. It. I mean, the most iconic soundtrack of a sports movie, maybe yeah. ever. Well, outside, Rocky. Of, outside of Rocky. Yeah. But you, you dun, know. Dun, the, dun, 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 dun. But you know the Chariots of Fire. Dun, 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 I don't even know what that dun, movie is. 
dun 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 dun. They're just white dudes running on the beach. You would know the movie. <laughs> yeah. You've heard you, I mean, the sound. You would, know about, the, you would know that song. What least. about a soccer movie? Is there a soccer movie? I think we did, did that. soccer, dude. Ladybugs. Oh, we did. <laughs> See, we're already. <laughs> Dusty's into it, man. I, I like love, it. I love sports movies. Yeah, I do, too. too. I do, too. Me, too. All right. Gladiator. Yeah. Uh, is there anything else? I don't think so. I'd like to. Uh, I'm, I'm going to be in Columbus, Ohio this weekend oh, at nice. the Columbus Funny Bone. Awesome! I Great go there club. every year. People do come to those shows, and uh, I hope they come again. It's going to be very exciting. If you if you're a listener from Columbus and you came last year, I got a whole new I got a whole new act from Ooh. last year. So, you know, I I mean I've been able to pump out. Now the hour's not where I want it to be, but I've been able to pump out a new hour. Uh, pretty fast and it feels good. Yeah. yeah if you're listening, it's awesome. not it's not where Dusty wants it to be, or even where you'll want it to be. But <laughs> <laughs> it is good though. People have been like loving it. That's great. Yeah. Well, I was just in outside Columbus, and a lot of Buckeye fans said to tell you hello. And uh, did they? Oh, after the loss. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's uh, fun. I um October 27th, 28th, I'll be in Dallas and Fort Worth at Hyenas Comedy Club. Awesome. That. November 8th, I'm headlining Zanies here in Nashville. Boom. All right. Now, I'm here at Zanies all the time for like New Material Monday or mm-hmm. opening for you guys, but Zanies finally gave in and let me head a lot of shows. So. Are you going to put us on the show? I don't know. I guess I should, right? I'd like to be on it. Yeah, I would like to do it too. Oh, really? Let me kind of put you on the spot here. If you'll but, have, no, no, we can talk about it later. I'm yeah. just saying. But know that if we don't end up being on the show, people know that we did ask to do it. Yeah, well, I guess folks, let us know if, if y'all want Aaron and Dusty on the show and we'll decide then. So anyway, please come to those shows. Uh-oh. <laughs> Dusty, tell us when you know this song. I I, I mean, this feels like uh, Ric Flair's intro music. <laughs> <laughs> best, best wrestling movie. I think that might get a deep, demonetized on YouTube, though, if you uh, play that song. Oh, yeah. You recognize that? Yeah. Okay. They'll probably have That's to take it out, though. No, 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 no. That was less than 15 seconds, right? I don't know. Lauren said, I don't know. We'll see. Or we'll remove it later. Best wrestling movie. I think we're the wrestler. This whole podcast, oh, best but, yeah. wrestling <laughs> yeah. movie. Oh, no. Um, um, no Holds Barred with Hulk Hogan and Tiny Lester. I've never heard I of like it. it. I like it. I, you I, never heard of No Holds no. Barred? What about but best guess, um, arm wrestling movie? <laughs> <laughs> over the top. <laughs> yeah, over the top. <laughs> What's your second favorite arm wrestling movie? (laughs) (laughs) Any dates coming up here? In November 3rd and 4th, I'm in Albany, New York at the Albany Funny Bone. All right. I love that club. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, It's going to be a lot of fun. Got a good mall there. Yeah. Come to that if you're in the Albany area. Or anywhere around. (laughs) Or anywhere. Fly to it. If you're in California, you've been looking for an excuse to come to Albany. I know you have. So come on out there. And then the next week, I'm in Bridgeport, Connecticut. (laughs) (laughs) Hey, I like the stress stress factory. factory. I don't got a lot to say about Bridgeport. But the stress factory, they've been been very good to me. So come on. If you're in Bridgeport, Connecticut, I'll be back there. (laughs) And be careful. Yeah, yeah, I will be. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. All right. All right. That's it. That's it. Thank you. Thank you to everybody. Yeah, thank you. As always, we're not lost. Though. Yeah, we love you. Right, and we're having a good time. We love you. I, I feel I've said some mean things about Nate today. I'm sorry about that. It's all a joke. Uh, just kind of recap real fast what you said. <laughs> you, look, not- you looking for a clip? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you looking, looking for a social media. I clip? just want to go to the very. We end joke of around the- a lot. I I joke that Dusty was fired from the podcast, and a lot of people thought that was real. Mm-hmm. The four of us are thinking. still. It was just. It's just schedules haven't matched up. Yeah. At some point, the four of us will be back. And some of you might not want the four of us mm-hmm. to be back, but at some point it will happen. Unfortunately, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> All right. <laughs> well, that's it. We love you. Thank you. We're having a good time. All right. <laughs>